Now, problem, I shall transform your hair, create a masterpiece. I am an artist with a pair of scissors. My new cuts got him talking at the barbershop. First from the barbershop, flop in the beauty salon. My new cuts got him talking at the barbershop. I got a show where you can listen and view. My new cuts got him talking at the barbershop. Bring them flowers and together with the scissors salute. My new cuts got him talking at the barbershop. One cut, two cut, three cut, four. Spending hours in salons on your hairstyle. For oh, the Lord protects his barbers and he makes the stubble grow. Caesar! Salute! Salute! Sis Salute, welcome to the Sis Salute Show. I'm your host, Elada Barber. My co host from Philly. Out here, beard sculptor, Al Uppercut. Did you talk to him? Yo, Say yo, something yo, to them. Yo, 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 This is Al Uppercut, the capo of the beard movement. Scissor salute to everyone watching tonight. Make sure you guys share that link on the yes. Facebook, on the IG. This guy's a natural already. Listen, hey, we got to get some people to view this, man. Big night. Big night. Big night. We're going to ask ourselves for grab this mic. Grab this mic. You might see some hands. In here, because we have Lou the Face Gishin. <laughs> he came up in here as well from Paramount Styles. You, he was, you. he's been, this is his third week here, so he has to get, we got to get this guy on camera's third week. Stop recording and you get on here. Stop recording, you get on here. This is third week here on the show. Um, he showcased and then came here for our owners. That, well, that's from, well, let me do the recap. Let's do the, the meaning of the Sis Lou. First, I'd like to Sis Lou out uppercut. Gary the Barber, we went to Bev's East Coast Mecca gym today. The Mecca. The Mecca, the Mecca. of weightlifting I was for there. the whole East Coast, and we were there. Get, clanking them weights. They got pig iron in there. If you don't know what pig iron means, that means it's like steel. There's actual weights in there, not click, the plastic clack, ones. Click, clack. And I'm not going to lie. My gym spoils me because we have all this state-of-the-art. It it's, it's, a, it's a good gym's gym, you know, so... If you're ever in Long Island, or if you're ever coming out to the Sis Lou show, and you're about that brolic life, yes, sir. let me know. We'll, we'll hit Bev's. That, that'll be the thing. We'll hit Bev's. If you're about that brolic, only if you're about that brolic life, though. You got to let me know what's up. Be good. So let's get into the meaning of the Sis Lou, which is a gesture, compliment, greeting, lifestyle, and brand. Dedicated to bringing barbers and hairstylists together worldwide. And we use the Sis Lou show as an outlet to actually make that happen. Every Monday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time, we give the opportunity for the visual artists to come down here and showcase their skills live on the Scissor Salute stage. While also conducting interviews with them so you can find out how they got started, where they currently are, where they plan to be going on their journey. Mm -hmm. so how rude of me to keep that on. Going on their journey. Now, social media has impacted our industry so hard where... The industry used to grow yearly, now it's monthly, weekly, daily, and hourly, where things seem to be changing. And social media has impacted our industry so much, where this is the era of the independent educator. In other words, we no longer have to rely on these companies to provide us with gigs for education. We could go about it and take it, you know, basically do it ourselves if you choose to but you never know if you're going to have what it takes if you're not cutting outside of your comfort zone the scissor salute show is a perfect place for you to try to do that you never know you're like oh i can do that until you get uh, you cut hair out of your comfort zone it might throw you off or you hear your voice on the microphone that might throw you off too so if you'd like to showcase with us you download the scissor salute show app fill out the showcase information and we'll schedule you in Mm -hmm. Any barber, hairstylist, makeup artist looking to showcase with us, that's all you have to do. Or if you would like to advertise with us or book us for an event, again, same thing. Download the Scissor Salute Show app, fill out the showcase information, or email us, scissorsalute at yahoo.com, and we'll get back to you in the order that the email is received. I'm in a zone today with this guy, Al, man. Hey, listen, you know what? I want to touch on that because that's, like, that's a great opportunity because, you know, being on stage and being in a barbershop, two totally different things. Getting on the mic, hearing your voice, seeing people right in front of you, man, it's kind of like, yeah, 
you know, you kind of get shell shocked right after. And then explaining yourself too. Right. Are you yeah. able to explain yourself mm -hmm. while you're doing what you do? See that that is the big difference. Right. You know, some people might be able to cut good hair really good, but then when it comes down to you being ha you having to explain word for word what you're doing, are you able to make that connection with them? Right. And that, uh, this is the perfect place for you to practice here at the Scissor Salute Show. Yeah, that's, you definitely want to take advantage of that opportunity. Definitely. So it's just like he said, if you're watching this right now, right underneath my finger, there's a share button. Please press that share button one time. Share it on your link. And then if you really want to get funky fresh with it, press that share, share button share, again. Share, share, I'll share, give share. you the opportunity to copy the link, copy it, or uh, invite people. Invite them. Let, them. let everybody know that there's a show for barbers and hairstylists to watch. So the hashtag is currently at 570,000 times that the wow. hashtag is being used says salute to that says salute to that make sure you follow us on instagram facebook everything is says salute show download the says salute show app as well so you can f keep up to date with what we're doing if you have downtime i'm gonna do it right now you're at the shop you're at the salon the only way to improve a selfie for barbers and hairstylists is to take a says salute selfie no, one more, one more. Hold on, hold on. One hold more. On. <laughs> so you take a scissor salute selfie, hashtag scissor salute selfie, at New Eureka Queen, N-E-W-Y-O-R-I-C-A-N, underscore Q-U-E-E-N. I'm in the zone right now, Al. I'm I think it's from it. I think it's from going to Bev's. It's the work. I felt like a real meathead in there. It's, it's, <laughs> I think it was going to Bev's. Really? And uh, one time, the show is co-produced by the co-owner of the scissor salute, New Eureka Queen, produced by the owner... Of the Salute, Sephiro. We're broadcasting out of Massapequa, Sephiro. Long Island, New York. Out of Strong Island TV, the quickest stream channel, quickest growing stream channel on Facebook, and LA's on the boards. Let's do a recap of last week's show. Scissor Salute presents business owners episode. Owner of C Salon, located in Queens, New York, we had Sonia. Styles by Sonia. Sonia, it's crazy how the barbershop guys work. <laughs> Sonia works with solely just her daughter. Mm. It's just her and her daughter. But she was explaining how she f felt like she had a restart when she got to open up her own salon. She was working for someone and, you know, she was stagnant. She, there was no movement. But once she opened up her own salon, she was able to breathe again. But the whole point of me saying the barbershop guys is that it's just her and her daughter. Now, Gus in the middle, Gus the, uh, Gus the barber from Uppercuts in Long Island, he just so happens to run a shop where there's 11 barbers mm. in the establishment. We just came from my custom cuts. There was nine barbers on a Monday. They were all cutting. All cutting. All cutting hair. There would have been hair on the floor, but there was a new. There's a new barber in there, and he's sweeping all over the place. So, <laughs> like, you, you, there's hair getting cut, and he's catching Bro, it. Was it, like, it, it, it was like a Friday afternoon in there. Yeah, Saturday morning. Since salute to my custom cuts. So again, you have Sonya that comes with two. Gus has eleven, and Ludafagician, who just has him and someone else. Oh, uh, hold up! Turn that on. Is that on? Is that on? Hold up! Hold up! Hold up! Go ahead. We just added one starting next week. Okay, so we just nice. added one. But Lou was explaining how he just doesn't want to fill in the chairs. Mm. That seems to be a problem. And it, I, w I, would, I understand it as it, I don't own a spot, but bills have to be paid. Lou gave the great advice that you got to make sure that you're able to take care of everything yourself before you start trying to do other things. Lou, what is the importance of that saying right That's there? Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, if the ship sinks, you know, and you can't, you can't hold it up, it's going to sink. So you got to be able to make sure that on your own, you know, take care of bills just in case if everyone turns their back on you, man, you can hold it up yourself. Mm. There you go, man. Another gem right there. Oh, I respect that. He is wearing a Superman shirt as he says <laughs> Hopped out the phone booth on him. Man of Steel. <laughs> and, hold on, hold on, hold on, and the call-ins was from Charles, 
which is from Exclusive Cuts Barbershop in El Paso. Right there, that is the mobile barbershop that he's about to be putting into rotation. About to be putting that mobile barbershop. And sis, salute to Charles right there. Wow, yeah. He announced on the show last week, and I'm honored I'm going to be hope hosting the Halloween Massacre. But listen, it doesn't stop there, people. Listen to this, Seth. Last week, we announced that I'm going to be hosting, correct? This week, we might as well announce it. Al, go ahead. I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be doing a beard sculpting class, sharing what I know. Uh, I'll be a guest judge as well. I can't wait. You it see, you guys crazy. think I'm playing when I said the barbershop gods work in mysterious ways. <laughs> I was out here teaching the class, and I was like, hey, you know what? Let's, you know, he wanted to link up, so we want the bevs. And then, you know, of course, any barber that's... If you're ever out here and you want to come to the Sis Lou show, it's not, like, hard to get here. Oh, all you have to do is just let us know that you want to be here. You could be an in-studio guest, or you could showcase with us. You know, download the Sis Lou show app, fill out the showcase information, or email us at salute at yahoo.com. Or you could just come here and be a guest. But the whole point is, I they we just announced that I'm going to be hosting the Halloween Massacre last week. And now Al just so happens to be here. And he just just made it. It's crazy. Let me know that he was going to be a judge and an educator there. And I've been talking about the Barbershop Guys all day to this, man. It's like you got ESPN or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he said ESPN. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> and... Okay, so you had Charles calling, and now here goes the thing. Charles, Charles owns the establishment with his wife. Hmm. So he's cutting into the establishment with his wife. It's, so now that's, that's, that's another twist. That's awesome, yeah. So we started off talking about Sonia, who was cutting with her daughter. So that's fam, how you cut with fam. Hmm. Gus, who has, runs an 11 barber barbershop. Lou, who's from a two-person barbershop, just added someone that's going to be started next week. Says salute to that. And Charles, who cuts with his wife. Hmm. So it's that. Okay. So now it's like, okay. Wow. This is turning somewhere. You know, everything's connected. Then the last person to call in last week, owner of Makeup and Hair, located in Rockville, Maryland, Mika C. It's just her in her salon. It's just her. She does hair and makeup. She says she has a nice size establishment it is just her that works there she gets booked to do a lot of photo shoots videos you know she's doing a lot of that type of work a lot of freelancing work but she works for herself so i don't even know what the i would say freelancers because she's getting up 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 out of her establishment all right so who do we have this week you read that bottom part this week okay there, so this week scissor salute presents ray lansky He'll Yo, tell me, he doesn't, now tell me that doesn't sound like Ray a Wu-Tang Lansky, member. That, yeah, that's like, that's like a Wu-Tang member. There's like power man, behind Ray that Lansky name right there. Man, Ray with a man's beat. <laughs> that's like a lot of power behind that name right there. Yeah, it is. Showcasing, we have beauty blogger from Wayne, New Jersey, Danielle Cologne. Oh, Danielle Cologne. That's Cologne. how I feel like. Danielle Cologne. <laughs> She's going to be here. At Danielle Cologne X3 from Exclusive barbershop located in west orange new jersey landon crawford jr at razor i hope i'm saying this right ld1 i'd say underscore razor underscore i l. is that i or l i apologize i have no idea man <laughs> underscore d1 and in studio guests we have barbering educator and owner of exclusives barbershop ray lansky at lansky exclusives Wealth and brand builder Dante Stevenson at Dante underscore financial. And from New York City Hair Battles, we have my man, AA Straight Razors at AA Straight Razors. So it sounds like a, a pretty busy night we got tonight. And again, wasn't even on the schedule, Al Uppercut. So, Al, thank you for having you, me. While you're here right now, we're just going to get into a little little thing with you. Right. You know, how does it feel to get called, you know, by a well-known company, well-established company, well-respected company, and, you know, like, hop on a train like you just did on Father's Day and teach a class today? Well, you know what, man? Everything everything is definitely a blessing, man. I've been working. I've For, for those of you who don't know, I've been cutting hair for 17 years, 
and I've been on a social media thing pretty strong, I guess, for now, like four years. And every, you know, I told myself about three years ago, well, when I first started Instagram, which was like four years ago, I said, I said, I want to start it to make money, right? Showcase my work, you know, eventually get appointments off of that, and then eventually get paid to actually advertise for other companies on my IG account. So, you know, um, since a salute to Lee, you know, he from Barbershop Connect, he helped me out a lot. You know, I owe a lot to that man right there. And, um, you know, it just took off from there. And then the next level was, you know, getting with the sponsor and actually getting sponsored. And that's where, where uh, Maestro's came into play, Maestro's Classic. And that was about three years ago. And, you know, and then Babylus, man. That was, that was just a blessing right there. So let's get into Maestro's Classic because you actually work at headquarters. Right. So bring us through a typical day at headquarters. So a typical day at headquarters, I, I get there usually about 10 o'clock. Um, my appointments start. I leave there around 6. But, you know, throughout the day, it's, it's, it's a really personal, intimate setting. Um, everything's appointment only, you know. Uh, Usually my customers get, depending on what I do, it's about a 45 minutes to an hour each cut. I take my time. It's just me and the client in there. Everything's one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of consultation, uh, things like that. And it's just laid back, man. It's just working at my own pace. You know, it's, it's I work to that point for that to be allowed. Work smarter, not harder. That was always my, my, uh, my uh, you know, mindset. You know, I wanted to work smarter, not harder. I paid my dues grinding behind the chair, sun up to sundown, leaving the shop at midnight, getting there at, at 6 in the morning. I paid my dues. So the next goal for me was to, you know, just work smarter, not harder and get this, you know, get this, this company money, you know. Definitely. So, so we've seen, you know, if you're not following Al Uppercut, he's been reposted on some like he was just telling me, he's been reposted on other pages besides Barber page. He's been reposted on uh, World Star. He's been reposted on a couple art pages, mm -hmm. you know. And with Maestro, you've had opportunity to cut hair in places where barbers usually don't cut hair. Like you've cut yeah. hair at the Olympia. You've cut right. hair at NASCAR. So bring us through the first time you cut hair at Olympia and nascar like what is the feeling no, no one's setting up barber shops there you know what it's crazy man to see the look on people's faces when they see a barber setting up at a nascar event it's like wow what are these people doing you know it's it, it hasn't been done but then you come to realize that so many people outside of our industry are so intrigued by what we do it's like it's it's people don't understand it man it's just it just draws people in you know and you we're just touching on a whole different clientele, a whole different market, you know? And it's just something that I tell barbers. I'm like, look, you know, and the phrase is like so cliche, think outside the box, you know? But really, you have to because everything's getting kind of repetitive now with the, the shows and everything. And, and no disrespect to anybody who's doing shows. I love the shows. I try to go to as many shows as I can. But, you know, you got to think outside the box too because, you know... All the different clientele that we have sitting in our chair, they do a lot of other things besides sitting in the barbershop getting a haircut. Correct. You know? So there's a whole other market that we can tap into, and it's just crazy. You know, the people that I meet, the networking that's being done, it's just it's crazy, man. And speaking it's of crazy. shows, this Sunday, our uppercut is going to be working with Babylus, and I'm going to be working with Respect My Craft uh part of the Barber Maestro's program yeah. with Maestro's Classic, but we're both going to be repping there with Maestro's Classic. This Sunday, June 25th, the Barbering is Life Expo at the Fillmore in Philadelphia. Uh, go to their Instagram, Barbering is Life, for all the information if you plan yeah. to attend, vent, or compete at this event. But come and check us at Booth 160. You see, I got to keep it down because that <laughs> workout from Bev's got me amped up. <laughs> so I know Seth for looking yes, at me like, come, me come down. Scissor salute to Tone Cuts. Yes. Uh, he's throwing the uh, Barbering is Life Expo, man. It's going to be crazy. We, we also have a, um, there's going to be sneaker vendors there. Yes. We're going to well, have a sneaker You make sure con. you come and check the Awakening. The, the Awakening. Barber Maestro Awakening Maestro Showcase. This is part two 
Respect My Craft is going to be doing this is part two. Mm -hmm. We have over 21 barbers showcasing from the DMV, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. Barbering is life. It's gonna be it's gonna be a great thing, and along we are gonna have the Maestro's Classic competition, Beer Authority, which is gonna be the South of France, and there's also gonna be the Beer Proper. Mm -hmm. So, for more information, yeah. just follow me on IG, follow Al Uppercut on Instagram as well. Right. Also, keep in mind too, we have an educational seminar. That's eleven o'clock in the morning. At eleven o'clock in the morning, and there's gonna be some talented educators. And there. guess what? I don't think there's a fee to get in there at 11 nice. o'clock. I don't wow. think there's a fee. For the barber maestros, I don't think there's a fee. But I, I, I honestly think you guys can think what you want to think with Maestro's Classic. But if you are interested to see what Maestro's Classic can do for you, <laughs> I definitely suggest you check it out. Al, thank you so much for, uh, thank you for filling in this spot right here. He's not going anywhere. We're going to make sure he's mic'd up. Because I know uh, AA Straight Razor is about to come on here. And I um, I know Al's a big fan. So Al's probably going to have sure. some questions coming up. So Al, before we let you go, please let everybody know how they can get in contact with you. And all your social media information that you'd like to share with us, please do so now. The stage is yours. Well, it's pretty simple with me. My IG is at Al Uppercut, all one word. That's basically it. You know, all my info is in my bio if you want to book me for an event. Uh, class, I do private classes as well. All the info is in the bio. My email is in the bio. And just, you know, get a hold of me that way. Definitely. Uh, and if you're watching right now, please press the share button. Press that share button. Share, 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 share. You see that? Right underneath this finger right here, press that share button. That's right. Mash that button. Like right here. Down there. I don't want to do it because I just want the bevs. <laughs> East Coast Mecca. So I don't know. We're going to go to a video and then switch everything up here. Got a video? Let's play that My Show's Classic again. Oh, uh, AAs? Okay, we're going to go to a little uh, video. And we're going to play some musical chairs. <laughs> we are beyond the chair. We are a culture. A movement that sets the trends. We're bringing you the hip hop and the barbershop culture of our past. On August 20th, 2017, New York City and AA Straight Razors will bring to you the first cultural barber battle in the only place it can and spread love the Brooklyn way. Okay, welcome back to the Sin Salute Show. Sitting right here in the studio today, we have AA Straight Razors. Gentlemen, can you introduce yourselves for the people that are viewing? Um, this is Al, AA Straight Razors. What's up? My name is Heist. And uh, these guys, I don't know, if you're on Instagram, if you're on social media, you can see they make them custom razors. And the story behind them custom razors is, to me, we're just going to give you a little bit of background before they get into it, their announcement that they're going to make. It started off, Al wanted to give a gift to his barbers and he wanted to do something nice for the people that work for him he wanted to do something unique so he made these customized razors you remember that yes no don't yeah can you see that <laughs> got that elephant memory yeah <laughs> so he made these nice razors for people that work for him and next thing you know it just starts clicking together clicking together and uh l let everybody know you know you tell the story and where where's the story up to now well, basically, um, the story, you know, we've grew throughout the couple years now. Um, we've been to numerous events. Um, we had a point now where we're creating a battle for New York City. And we want to create a little something different than what everybody else is doing now. So the point we're at now is creating a, a barber battle for the barbers and for the people. Okay, so first off, let's go with the date and location of the event. Um. It's in Brooklyn, which is a major, a major part of what the event actually is. Is we're keeping it in the in the, in the city, 
and we're making it local for for everybody to be able to come out and enjoy. And this Brooklyn's August changed 20. too. Oh Brooklyn yeah, ain't the same. Way oh yeah, to be. oh yeah. It's it's gonna be on 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 Johnson Ave and Morgan Ave. It's um consider the seventh coolest place in the world by yeah. Vogue magazine. I'm about saying no one want to throw nothing over there in Brooklyn. <laughs> Back in there, you didn't want to throw not a oh, not nah, like nothing. Things done change. Yeah, man. of course, of course. That's yeah. that's good though. Okay, so let's talk about what you're bringing together for this hair battle. You're saying it's something different for the barbers. Let's get into detail exactly what you guys have in store. It's cultural. That that's the word we've been going with from day one that we thought of the idea, and now as we're promoting it, it's a hair battle, but it's cultural. That's why we chose Brooklyn. Um, the scenery in the area, the what New York stands for from hip-hop to barbering to fashion, how all that is blended into one thing where it's not just this idea of barbering being this corporate thing that we got to bring it back to its essence. Definitely. you got. It's good, though, because two of the top five MCs is from Brooklyn, Fabulous and Jay-Z. What do you say to that? What are the other three? Huh? I said two of the top five. Okay. I don't know. I don't know the other three. You guys can sit there and argue all you want. We bring it up in the shop every time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Turn it. <laughs> Is it on? You got to turn it on. All the way up. All the way up. Let me see that. Let me see it. Oh. Oh no, he ain't got no batteries in this. Go ahead. Go ahead, Al. So. Yeah. So go ahead. You know what? I agree with Jay Z. Okay. <laughs> you don't like fabulous? Not yeah. top five. What? You're bugging. Who else has been more consistent than that man? Consistency who, doesn't uh, mean when great. He but listen, but when he started, he's still relevant. When he started, who's still there? Consistency doesn't mean great. He hasn't dropped the album. He's, a he's one of my favorites. He just dropped two back to back. Mixtapes. <laughs> mixtapes, but they got yeah. like eight. He's a mixtape god, but not, okay, not so one of the greats. <laughs> one of the greats. I don't care what y'all say. <laughs> well, my show. Okay, hey, don't forget. But, but is, is there something like this? Is this something like this? Is there going to be like panel discussions where people are able to talk at this hair battle? Maybe a topic like that covered? Or are you going to just be, you know, showing some of the greats in the background? Well, well, we're doing a, a warehouse event. Uh, we chose like a really broken down warehouse because we want that New York grit fill. Mm. Um, right. We're going to decorate the warehouse where we're from graffiti canvases to art to murals. Oh, you're taking it back to Beat Street. That's right. We I do, mean, we're doing like 80s, 90s, incorporated. It's going to be really dope. We got a breakdancing performance. We got some kids coming from the Bronx to perform. Not to cut out off, but the title says it all. It's No Sleep Till Brooklyn. Yeah, so don't sleep that's till that battle. So you guys got the Beastie wow. Boys going there? That's what it is. The Beastie Boys? I mean, we're trying to get them there, but it's not easy. <laughs> but we are working on it, some, and I'm not lying about rest that. Rest easy. One of them, uh, yeah, MCA, one of them passed MCA. away. MCA. Yeah, that's one of the issues with the Beastie Boys right now. They're not really doing any events because of the, the passing of him, and they're trying to like respect him. So that's where the issue is, but you never know. They might just come through and do a walkthrough. Ah... Yeah, that be I know. Oh. Sephro gonna love that boy. I mean, Sephro's Sephro, gonna love right? the whole event we throw in. Sephro, <laughs> uh, Sephro, when we was younger, right? Sephro used to be on look at the tape. Remember the album and they, it, yeah. what, what, what was written there backwards? You see this? This is this is how you know it's good, right? <laughs> you see what it says, right? You spin the record backwards, and you, <laughs> yeah. that's where the message is at. I know. All right, so what? I mean, give us a list of some of the categories. I did see on Instagram you had some judges. Yeah, I love how um, you have Ruben Blaze there. Me and I was just talking about Ruben. Yeah, um, so tell that man, that, I tell you, yeah, I tell, man, I tell you that boy is nice he's like that. Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, um, see, what we try to do is, we, we didn't try to just keep in New York. Honestly, we have one judge that's from out of state, but um, we want to give a lot of people that are known in the industry an opportunity and honor them to judge. You know, they're, they're very talented. You know, for example, like Ruben Blades. You know, he's somebody that's re really talented. He, yo, he does the razor with both hands. Yeah, he, he's he does the razor with the right hand and the left hand. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. So, you know, he's an award-winning barber, you know what I mean? And we want to honor him to be able to judge a category because he has the talent and also the skills to be able to judge a, a haircut that's good or not. You know what I mean? salute to that. Yes, yeah, there's a salute to that. And that's my man, Ruben Blades, you know, Corona, Barbershop, the lineup, shout out to them, you know. Well, 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 I can, I can understand because you want to roll right now. You're yeah, yeah. Up feeling good. <laughs> I, I, I thought I was on Hot 97, you're sorry. Feeling good. It's, it's, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, you know, we gave a lot of people opportunities and honor them, you know, being this is a New York-based event, you know, no discrimination to anybody because we do have somebody that's from Philadelphia. 
And we, we created these categories and we changed them up because we don't want to be just like anybody. You know, we're New York. New York sets trends. We're, we're very different. We over, always originate. So what categories you got? Um, we, 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 created, uh, we created one of the categories we created is the New York Minute. And that's like in replacement for the fastest fade. Uh -huh. So anybody as a New Yorker, they understand what a New York Minute is. Everything moves fast. So yeah, we do. That's our little I quote. can't stand going out of state sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so in that category, we have Joe. Joe, he's a local celebrity barber. He's not really known in the industry, but he's somebody that's really known. Um, as you can see, the whole judging team is Filipinos, so we got to show love to our Filipinos. Um, we have Rich the Barber, and we have Mickey from Queen's Finest. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of Mickey, but Mickey's known since the 90s to cut hair in four minutes. So we chose Mickey for that reason because he knows what a fast fade is and also well, a good looking I, fade. Is it going to be now that New York Minute? Are you going to give him a time frame or New York Minute, whoever finishes, get that person out the No, well, well, the New York Minute is like any standard battle for the fastest fade. It's 15 minutes, okay, but it okay. also has to be clean. And if you do finish first, you will get credited with extra you know, points and stuff like that. And now everyone's going to find that out like when they... Well, when they well, sign up, the rules are going to be expensive. Well, we have rules on the website right now. You go onto the website, you'll see all the rules. Um, we have all the categories there. We have a little more history about New York. So while we're here, plug that website in and then go to the next category. So just say the website. The website is NYC Hair Battles, or it could be NY Chair Battles, however you want to read it. And that's what it is. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Next category. Yeah, the next category will be... Um, the Brooklyn. Guys, come in. Oh, come in. Well... We have the Brooklyn now. The reason we named it the Brooklyn is because I'm not sure if everybody understands. The Brooklyn and every other state is considered the tape up. We wanted to introduce this tape up. It's a it's a category that's that's a haircut that's always been done in the barbershops. Like at least eighty seven percent of the time, the tape up is done in the barbershop. Right. So we wanted to incorporate that battle. We didn't understand why nobody incorporated the tape up in in the battles because. It's a haircut that I could say even 88% of the time is done in the haircut, more than the fade, more than the shape up. So true, we true. wanted to incorporate that. And being that it's no sleep to Brooklyn hair battle, what better category to add is the Brooklyn. Right. You know, right. so. It's, it's, it, it's, sorry to cut you off, Al, but it's kind of like a universal cut. It's all type, all texture hair get that a tape up. You know what I mean? Right. All the so. Brooklyn. And it, it's true, like you said. It's the tape up, right? Low fade? Yeah. In yeah. the class today, we were talking about like how that. You know, you go to a different area, and that that haircut has so many different names. Yeah, yeah. But I've always known it to be the Brooklyn. Yeah, same, yeah, same the thing. Brooklyn, Long Island, the Brooklyn. They come out, but let me get a Brooklyn. Yep. And I found out like my second. Say that? And my second, I've been oh, cutting okay. hair seventeen years. My like, my first week cutting hair. Like, let me get a Brooklyn. Like, what dude? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and, and a lot of people Brooklyn. don't understand. If you go to the Urban Dictionary and look it up, it's in black and white. The tape up is called the Brooklyn. Yeah. So it's in the mm. Urban Dictionary. So there it goes. In the, so it's fact. It's facts. <laughs> so you know how it's we do. We there. just provided facts, and like I told you, we 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 trying to do. I ain't never right. said a lie. I never. You ain't never told a lie. Now nah, you know I ain't lying. If I told you I was gonna do yeah, a battle, I'm doing a lie. battle. <laughs> so who the judges right. in this one? Um, the judges in this one is your man Ruben Blaze. Yeah. This is salute to Ruben. Um, also we have Mona Lisa. She's also known as Queen Cuts and Roses. Queen Cuts and Roses. She, I like that. she cuts out a, a well connected now. She's still over there. Yeah, and she's a Brook Brooklyn Bushwick native, so it's in her hometown. She loves the idea. And she does like modeling too. She does modeling. She does cuts. She's a real trendsetter. So we chose her just for that to bring that element, you know, that style to the to the battle. Um, and then we got Cass Styles. You ever Cass, knows Cass? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I got. I actually got to hit her up, trying to get her to be a maestro, man. Trying to. Try to get it down. I seen her at uh, Barbican. Mm -hmm. She was working with uh, Well, Lee I mean, we're Barbican. not trying to throw no jabs at nobody, but she ain't going to be taking no tickets. She's going to be judging. All right. Oh, okay, yeah, she's going to be judging right there. You know, no disrespect, Lee. I don't know if you're listening or not. But we, we, got, we got her judging, and she's very honored. Someone get me some pennies <laughs> hot in here. <laughs> so, okay, so then we have Cass. Love, love her, man. Much respect to her. Let's go to the next one. Love the theme right there, the Brooklyn. Brooklyn is. We were just listening to J. Rude the Damager. Yeah. Right here. There you go. J. Rude the Damager. That's okay. what it is. Just nice. listening to him. Uh, so oh, the now one, the uh, next one is the Nas. The Nas Sierra Jones. Explain, uh, explain the Nas Sierra Jones haircut. And uh, the Well, um, we, being that it's a New York battle, um, what better haircut to make the main event? It's going to be actually the main event at the at the event. It's the Nas Signature Fade. Ooh. So we want the contestants, you know, 
skin fade number three on top with the half moon. So you're gonna be judged based on the skin fade, the cleaning. Now half moon better be and the half moon. Done. Not everybody know how to do a half moon. Better so not be a crescent hair. Yeah, better not be crooked. Oh, boomerang. It, 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 you ever see the half moon? Be, yeah. It be the bo- famous boomerang it, parts right yeah, there, it, boy. Exactly. So. So that's what what we created the Nas. It's really New York. It's a haircut that everybody does. It's a haircut that goes through all the all over the United States. It's a signature fade, and we chose we chose this panel here. These are all New York based judges also. So we chose Jay Sharps. Everybody knows him as the traveling barber. There goes Lee. Are we getting called? That's <laughs> <Is> Lee. Nah, nah. Who is it? Press hang up here. Yeah, press hang up. There you go. So just keep doing that. Sorry, caller. Sorry, caller, if you're calling in. They're going to oh, keep that. They, they're, they're relentless, whoever that is. Yeah. So, yeah. So, we chose Jay Sharp. You know, um, he's your traveling barber. We chose him because, you know, a lot of people don't know, but he does cut a lot of celebrities, like from Jada Kiss to all the, you know, the, 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 the rappers that don't really get credited too much but are really known. Um, we chose him because his haircuts are really dope too. Um, he's very smart. He he knows what a good haircut's supposed to be. So what better you know category we put him at? Then we chose Willis the barber. You know, Willis is you know Willis. Is, is, is fam and everything, and you know he's well connected. We yeah, had low east side. side. Yeah, low east side, and we chose him to also judge this category. You know, he's really stoked and he's honored about this this category. And then what better person to choose more than the most cultural urban barber that I know, Charlie Hustle. You know what I'm saying? He's been doing it since in Jamaica, Queens, since Pioneer. Since, you know, his uplick is the same uplick as me. Oh, yeah? From uh, Cuddy's. Cuddy's uh, Barbershop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now you see where we went with this with Charlie. Yeah. We had to put Charlie here. And for everybody who's watching, I say this every time Charlie Hustle comes up. Barbering is not a hustle. It's a profession. But it is a profession where if there's no hustle, no profit. Exactly. And says a salute to that. You heard Charlie? If you're watching. Yeah, of course, man. Charlie knows, man. So, yeah, so the, and he's like running marathons now, yeah. too. Look at him, yeah. man. Proud of him. So, yeah. So, um, I think at the moment, we, we still have some other categories to announce. We don't really have the flyers lined up yet. But um, we have the lineup. It's really the shape up with a beer. Nobody ever incorporated you know, a shape up with the beer and any It's back. crazy that you say that because Barbershop Connect, before they hit the million followers, and says a salute to Barbershop Connect for getting a million followers, we just talked about a regular haircut that got 31,000 likes last week. It was the picture of the old man. It was like a transformation. Yeah. Got 31,000 likes. But before that, Phil's Barbershop had the most likes on Barbershop Connect, which was, I believe, 8,500 and 8,000. They were just edge ups on kids. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Just, two, just edge ups on kids. So as you can see, we added two new categories to the industry. We added the 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 um the Brooklyn, and now we adding the shape up. But uh, what we did was with the shape up, we honored the lineup from New York with that category. That's it. That's a great concept. So, so it's called the lineup, and they're going to be the judges of that. I category. definitely recommend you bring somebody who has that furry forehead for that. Yeah, <laughs> furry forehead model. Yes. For that. So 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 yeah, we have that category, and the other category, I'm not sure if we have the the flyer should be up there, but yeah, if it's not, the um the the next no, it's not there. I don't think so. Um, not the list of it. The list of all the, of the them. list of yeah. He got it. La got it. You know. Okay, yeah, the, I guess where the categories right next are. To it. The right next to it, yeah. Right there. Yeah. So um yeah, so the next the next category that we're doing Ooh. is um it's gonna be called the no, no filter. filter. Um that category, being that he's not a New York based ball, but we still have a lot of respect for him and I and I like his movement. Um E dubbed that dude, Eric. Yes, yes. So yes, sir. Yeah, so dude, it's organic blends. Mr. Yeah. Organic blends. Right. So we honor that category under him and you know He's very proud of that. So we want to bring it back to the essence of New York where, you know, no disrespect to anybody that does, you know, enhancements and stuff, but this is New York. So if you're going to compete in the no filter, you have to create a freestyle design because that's what it's, it is. But we renamed it. No filters, no fibers, no pencils, no coloring. has to be just raw, New York style. You Say know here. So you just got, yeah, yeah, just, just cut hair and raw. So you're going to be based on that. You know what I mean? And it's funny to say that my man Sharpface just posted the video and there's a little debate going on. They said we should have done two categories, one for paint and one for no paint. But this is New York. We can't do that. You know what I mean? So we have to keep it raw. I, like, I just like the way, you, you know, you take in the culture of New York, mixing it in with the hair battle, changing up a couple things. I'm pretty sure you said you're going to have the breakdancing put in there. You know who does a lot of the breakdancing? The, like, Texas 
Texas Barber Battles. Oh, really? They put in a break dancing. Oh, wow. A lot. I've been to, been to a couple of them where they had like, oh, man, y'all got break. They do. The host, what's his name? Uh, the Golden Voice, God, Godline. He got it there, started pop. Line. Taper Godline. Type, or taper taper Godline. His, his, uh, there's another one, another Godline. My man got out there, started popping and locking and <laughs> ooh, ooh, well, doing a robot. Up. Well, we're taking it a little further back. We're bringing some kids from the Bronx. Oh, so you, you, I said you're taking it back so to B Street. Some, some B Boys, B Street. You style. watch B Street? How old are you? How old are you? Absolutely. I'm 29. Oh, you see, and you seen B Street? So I if I say Roxy, of course see. I got a Trap Called Quest shirt on right now, man. Come <laughs> on, but yeah, but like. Trap Called Quest came. <laughs> Trap Called Quest came like I'm, four, I'm, four, came like seven years after that. I'm, I'm, I'm in it, man. I'm yeah, in we it. we been, we in this, man. Oh, okay, okay. We so were just you... watching B Street the other day, like three weeks ago in oh, the barbershop. Barber shop. Okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, that's what we do. We pick certain days, and it's over. And what's the what's the young kid's name, man? Wow, you, you got me on that. Lee, man, his name is Lee. Lee answer the know. door, Lee. <laughs> answer the door. Listen, I just watch it for the performance. I'm not like too much on the characters. <laughs> nah, man, I watch. You know what it is, man. You know we grew up in it. Yeah. And when we had, when I first got a VCR, I thought we were rich. I was like, oh man, oh, got a man. VCR. Yeah, you were rich. You we got, got a VCR. VCR. <laughs> I was like, man, that was it. And that was one of the first movies that we seen on dope, there. Dope. That and Children of the Corn. Why the hell did I watch that? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I watch it? It was so scary. Yeah. Okay, so guys, All right, let's so hear them dates. Oh, Let me just give you one thing about the categories. If y'all want to sign up as NYC Hair Battles or NYC Chair Battles, um, what we're doing also is the f after the first two categories, we're going to have the breakdance, and then the winners are going to be announced. Then after the next two categories, the winners are going to be announced. So you don't have to wait all day to 12 midnight to be announced and be acknowledged by the crowd or the next day on Instagram. You're, the, the crowd is going to witness you at your best you know what i mean so you're going to have the crowd engage and watching you win and be announced as a winner what's the time frame for this event um this event is going to be 12 to 8 it's um 395 johnson ave it's in brooklyn it's a warehouse event uh we got a yard we're going to have barbecue style vending so it's a backyard that fits a whole bunch of people it's going to be graffiti on the walls real cultural you're going to be able to buy burgers hot dogs shish kebabs we're going to have a piragua guy there selling piraguas you know what i'm saying it, it's going to be really New York, you know what I mean? We're going to have a lot of great sponsors that I can't really announce yet. And it's it's, it's going to be mixed up. I have a feeling I mean? this ain't going to be the last time you guys come on the show to talk about this event, though. Yeah, it's not going to be the last time. Um, well, you guys are fam, so. Yeah, of course, so fam. that's what I mean. So um, we, have, we, have, we have a host and we have a, a guest DJ that's coming through. Um, the person that's going to host our event, the main host, is going to be Laura Styles from Hot 97. Nice. Wow. Okay. Um, we're also going to have DJ Fat Fingers DJing for Laura three Stiles. hours. Does he's going she does, she does to be street? scratching it up for us, keeping it old school. She's on the morning nah, show, that's right? Lisa Edwards. She's with, she's with Laura Ebro. Laura in the morning. Okay. Morning show with Ebro and, and, yeah. and Rosenberg. Yeah, hung, and, and hung up. Yeah, yes, up. yes. So we, we got, you know, and then we have some other people, guest appearances that we can't announce yet, but it's going to be a real dope event. It's going to be a lot of people, like any event, there's going to be networking. And we created this for the people, for the barbers. You know what I mean? We want from the competitors to feel special, to the people attending to feel special. And we're also only selecting certain vendors. We're not just letting anybody come to the event and nobody's going to carry the same product. So, for instance, okay. if I have a straight razor, you ain't carrying a straight razor. If you have a barber hat that's different, you ain't nobody else carrying a hat like you. If you have a beard oil, for instance, like Maestro's, ain't nobody else going to have a beard oil. Everybody's going to have that product. So, everybody, gives, if you want to go... It gives the vendors an opportunity. It gives the vendors an opportunity, which they have struggles now with everybody else just... Hello, you're live on air with the Sin Salute Show. Salute everybody, it's DJ and Barbara. Hey, what's up, DJ? DJ, just hold up real quick, DJ. We just uh, okay, just stay yeah. in the line though, because we're talking about the right. New York City hair battle. The no sleep till Brooklyn. And uh, no sleep to Brooklyn. And I know DJ's probably gonna want to get in there. So I mean, just I stay on the line. You know, you know, I'm in there with a the Nas cut. Oh, that's uh, what's up. Well, we, keep in mind, you have to sign up soon because it's not gonna be oversaturated like everybody else. There's only only be a limited tonight. amount of people that's gonna battle. So we're trying to keep the crowd okay. engaged with the guys on the stage, too. So it's a real intimate event. I mean, we're expecting a certain couple hundred, but it's still considered to the expos and everything, you know, 2,000, 3,000. We're not doing that. We're doing an intimate event. We want everybody to experience a great event. You know what I mean? So that's what we're doing. Definitely. And you, you okay. can see DJ. So, DJ, you coming for that Nas cut, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you heard. You heard. That means you're watching. Shop cut. I'm done with that. You, you, uh, okay, so because that means you heard us talk about the boomerang part. 
<laughs> boomerang, boomerang is going to it is automatically eliminated. Boomerang thoughts. <laughs> DJ, stay on the line. Just saw uh, Alka finish up saying what he's saying. Oh, hey, no. she, she so what? What I was saying was the vendors are going to be very. We're going to be very selective with the vendors where we don't have more than one of the same product where somebody doesn't get a chance to buy something or sell something because there's so many options of just this one thing. As Al said, for example, if we have a beer product like a Maestro Scissor Salute, which I'm, which I got on right I now. Could, I could say, okay, good. Scissor Salute. salute. If we, got, if, we got a, if we got a beer product, we're not going to have three other beer products where it's like, who's going to be able to eat off of I, that? I see, so basically, even with the theme, even the th even the theme to the vendors is straight New York. Oh, like, we're going to let you, okay, listen, we're not going to give any competition. We're going to make sure that you get your money's worth. Exactly. Exactly. We want everybody to experience something. Like, like with the vendors, with the, the people buying tickets, everybody's going to receive a raffle ticket with, with just regular admission. Um, vendors going to receive two tickets, raffle tickets. And what we're doing also, we're going to give you a part of the event. What we raffling off is, of course, going to be prizes, but you're also going to be able to take home that Biggie mural. You're going to be able to take home that graffiti canvas from that New York artist. You know what I mean? So we're we raffling off a piece of the event also. We should do a real New York and give them no table, just like a blanket. Right, right. We're going to do it like, like, you know, like, like, like over there in Florida. You guys going to have someone playing the bucket. Is there going to be people playing the buckets? I don't know. We might, we might have that. Who knows? But, Can yeah, I so you get a feel of what we're doing. We're trying to make it very different. We don't want the vendors feeling upset. All we could do is give you the opportunity to sell, but then when we get you there, it's on, your, it's on you to sell. You know what I mean? But we're going to give you the opportunity where if you have a product, nobody else next to you or even an outer event is going to have that product. Fair, it's fair so, enough. That's and fair there's enough. also, you know, sponsorship opportunities at the moment. We have, you know, most of our bigger sponsors are pretty covered, but we, we have um, sponsorship opportunities available for the categories. So companies are able to still come in and sponsor a category. Ah. Yeah, so it's going to be really dope. That's right, so basically... You've been observing these events for quite a while. Yeah. You basically took a little bit of this, took a little bit of that, and came up with ideas along the way. And now, that's it. It's coming together, giving it back to New York City, the city that's given it to you for so long. Yeah. And seems like it's going to be a great event. Let everybody know how they can get their hands on the tickets, the date. Just say that, please. Say that as much time as you can. Yeah. Plug in the date, yeah. the time, and how they can get All right. Um, put it in your calendar. This is August 20th, 2017, from 12 to 8. It's at the M. Blumberg Warehouse. It's on 395 Johnson Ave. It's a real cultural area. From when you park, you're going to love the scenery. You're going to have art, graffiti, culture everywhere. And then when you get inside the event, it's going to be really dope. Um, the way to attend this event, to compete, to register, or buy tickets, you will have to go to nychairbattles.com. And you're going to read a little more history about New York. You're going to see everything we have to offer. You're going to, from the competitors to buying tickets. And that, that's basically it, you know? Eli, what you said was, what you said was important, similar to what Al said earlier, where you said we, where we, students of the game, we saw people's events and learned from how they did things. Like Al said earlier, where it was, he hustled his way and, and, and worked hard to now where he could reap the benefits of all the hard work he put in, similar to what we're doing, which is we're learning through these experiences and seeing our contemporaries make mistakes, succeed, and we learn through all of that. We, see, we take pieces from how people are succeeding and how this event did this and how we could switch it up and tweak it and make it to a point where we make it our own and make it New York. Definitely. Yeah. And says this to my man Al. He was one of the judges when I took first place in Philadelphia yes. for the best fading style. It, real quick. How I much you paid him? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> I just want to say how dope it is that the way you guys are kind of like you're bringing hip hop into it and, and you're using words like culture, the essence. I think that's so dope because I feel, and, and just like you might agree, I know you're going to agree that, that barbering. Is a part of hip hop. I feel like we are. That's what it is. And and all the fact that you're acknowledging that. That's that's dope. And that's why we did that. We are hip hop. We grew up in the hip hop culture, and part of the hip hop culture is barbering. You know, right. all the talks in the barber shop, the debates from all that. You know, what I mean, from fashion to this to that. What you know, and where haircuts trend, and what hair to created. You know, all, obviously, all states have you know their little thing, but you know, New York. You know, we wanted to keep it that way. You know, give it that New York grit feeling. So when you go to our event. 
we gave you that warehouse feeling, you know. Um, I know, as far as I know, we're going to be the first warehouse battle in the United States. That I can tell you. Everybody's uh -huh. in a convention center. Everybody's in a hotel conference Let's get a clap. Room. Let's say get a hand clap. Um, Go ahead. And we want the real hand claps, people. It's not a machine. <laughs> and, and, yeah, that's what we wanted to do. We want to give you that New York grip feel, you know what I mean? And... And it's in a trending area. There's a lot of restaurants, bars, lounges. It's a dope area. Even after the event, you're going to be able to chill and you're going to love it. So you're watching the Sis Lou show right now. And what you're seeing on the screen is the cut camp. This is the opportunity where we give people to come down here and showcase the visual artists to come down here and showcase. We're conducting an interview with AA Straight Razors. And we're talking about the No Sleep to Brooklyn event that's going to be going on August 20th. Gentlemen. Before we let you go, let you sound off. Let everybody know how they can get to uh, attend, vend, or compete at this event. And, oh, hold up, DJ. Shit, we DJ. Yeah. DJ, <laughs> let everybody, listen, DJ, let everybody know how they can get in contact with you and your social media information. Oh, it's DJ underscore the underscore Barber, baby. Scissor Salute, everybody over there, Barber Maestro Salute, to Eli, my man Al over there. Y'all drive safe. It's ugly outside in New York. Yeah, it's all right. Well, good luck, DJ. I'll see you on Sunday, brother. All right, brother. I'll see you then. Peace. Okay, so gentlemen, please sound off again. Let everybody know how they can get their hands on tickets if they are the information that's needed to attend, vent, or compete at this event. Well, it's simple with our stuff. It's You, you can follow us on IG at AA Straight Razors and just go to NYC Hair Battle. And all the information is there from vending to individual tickets to categories to what inspired us to create this event and what it's about. Right? Yeah, and you can also get it here every Monday. Yeah, you can get your yeah, you tickets know. here every Monday on the Scissor Salute Show. We're dropping off some tickets here for Sephro. And y'all can get them here also at a discounted price. So you jump on that. If y'all going to be coming on the show for the next two months, you can get your tickets here. Scissor Salute to that. Scissor Salute to that. So... We're going to have Ray Lansky uh, talk on the mic a little bit while we do a little switcheroony. Says Luke, says Salute. The traffic is ugly. All right. Gentlemen. Hello. Thank you, man. Okay, I'm going to stay right here. So go, go ahead, Ray Lansky. Uh. Give us a, you know, talk about the gentleman that is showcasing right now. Sin Salute. Right now we have uh, JR. We have a, the new exclusive Young Bull exclusive barbershop. Landon, a.k.a. Razor L, you know. Yeah, yeah we was trying to figure out that is an L or an I. So it's Razor actually, L. It's actually an L. What's going on? It's actually an L. So, you know, Sin Salute to that, you know. All right. We, we had a, hey, listen, we almost didn't make it. We always didn't make it. So one thing, we got to send salute to God just for making it here. We left early and still got late through an ugly, crazy car. Oh, yeah, we know. There was <laughs> cats and dogs all over the car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all over the car. All uh, over. And then I then I have a loner, so I don't even know how to work the windshield wiper. I'm like, wait, what do I do? And what do I, I'm just so used to going up. Right out all day, man. I'm used to walking up to the car crazy. and the doors just open. I'm over here looking for the keys. So it's like 20 minutes to get into the yeah, car. Yeah, man, it was... Bams, bro. So, if we come... Okay, so right now you're watching the Sin Salute Show. Please do us a favor and press the share button if you're watching the show. So right underneath my finger right here, there's a share button. Share that button. Press it. And then press it again and then invite as much people as you can to watch the show. Let them know that there's something available out there for barbers, hairstylists, and makeup artists to... Showcase and speaking of makeup artists, right here sitting next to me, we have Danielle Colon. <laughs> Hello, I feel like that's the only way you can say that, <laughs> right? You got right. Right. Danielle Colon. <laughs> I appreciate it, thank you. All right, so your makeup artist, uh, give us the rundown how long you've been doing it, and what made you like when did you know this is it? This is what I'm gonna be doing. So, I first started when I was very young. My mom was a model and also a makeup artist, so I pretty much got uh -huh. it from her, yeah. So she used to always do my, do my makeup for any recitals that we, I would have, dance recitals, concerts, just special events, proms. And I loved watching her do it on me, and I would want to learn from her. So she was my, my teacher from the beginning, basically. And then, you know, when YouTube 
kind of started, then I started getting into the YouTube videos and watching other girls, you know, do makeup tutorials. And I was like, you know what, I think I can do it. So I just got a camera and just, just did it in my, in my bedroom. And I started just doing makeup tutorials on myself to show other girls how to, you know, do their makeup, even hair. I started with hair too. All right, so that's yeah. that would be the beauty blog. That would be the beauty, yeah. How many subscribers do you have to date on YouTube? I would say maybe like 1,300. Ah, yeah, I'm starting it. out. Getting, getting I'm, trying, I'm trying to get there, yeah. Okay, now when it comes to makeup, again, mm -hmm. you know, we've had a, a lot of makeup artists come on here. And a lot of the times, it's a little special effects. Mm -hmm. But we, we've had glamour on here as well. So... Now let's go over the glamour. Right. Is yeah. It, is it hands on makeup or using an airbrush? No, I'm not. I don't do airbrush. I don't do special effects. It's just something that anyone can do every single well, day. Well, you gotta do special effects. Halloween maybe, comes around. Maybe I know day, Halloween. You have fun. I've done looks before. I done Halloween looks before. I've done okay. you know like the gypsy look. Yeah, okay, uh, I did I'm the '90s look. You I'm know. About to say if that Halloween comes but around, you can't turn down our Halloween. Maybe movie. one day when I do the special effects, yeah. But for me, I feel like I target you know everyday people just to do everyday looks, well, something easier. Well, now it seems to be the season you have prom, prom season, graduation, yeah. weddings, mm -hmm. you know, how does it work hand in hand and do you work with a hairstylist when you do the freelancing for these events? No, I don't, I don't even, it's all on, on YouTube. I just show oh, how so to do it. Oh, so you just beauty just, blogging. Yeah, beauty blogging. Yeah. So you're not even going to the gigs. No, not, I mean, so you can ask first, me if you want me to do this it, This is the I'll first beauty it. blogger right here, <laughs> Seth. This is the first one. That we had a makeup artist or any artist that comes here that just simply solely works off of YouTube. Yeah, wow. just on myself. That's dope, though. <laughs> That's exclusive. And you doing all the education. So have, have you had your mom on there? No, but I feel like I should out of respect, right? I Absolutely. should have her on there. You should yeah. do the makeup on her. I know. I should. I want to. That's a good idea. She's watching right now. So maybe she'll be like, um, hello. <laughs> ding, ding. There right it goes. Here. Ideas here. Yeah. Ideas are born here. <laughs> Made here. I should have her on there. I would love to do her makeup. So which one got the most views? Which, which video? Was it something natural, blending into the skin? I, I want to the say eyebrow thing? Because you got the eyebrows are going good. Thank the you. Good. I love I'm, I'm, I love a good I love a good brow. I would I, love I, to actually have my own eyebrow line. I think you like should. De I definitely think you should put that tutorial out as much times as possible because there's yeah. a lot of females with some... <laughs> Broken eyebrows walking around. I can help you. Caterpillars thin, <laughs> caterpillars thin, just thin as, just why? Just that's, why is that so thin? That's the old school way of thinking, though. That's That was in, though, in the 90s. I was and never now it's in. Like, no, it was. Remember people got, <laughs> women used to get them uh, tattooed? No, they still do. It, really? Yeah, but my now sister, it's, it's called micro, micro blading. Is a little what bit is more it called, natural. micro? It's a little bit micro more natural. They, they just made a nice fancy. Just like the guys that were like, uh, like I'm bald, okay? I'm freaking bald. Okay, can't get it together. But now people are getting the hairlines tattooed on them. I seen that. Yeah. It, they're smiling. I know this kid I grew up with, man. He like this in the picture with his kid. He like, <laughs> like yo, how do you get that? Got a whole awesome. different swag. Right? Uh, yeah. Uh, absolutely. But I don't know. I would. I don't think I would do it. It looks painful, so I would rather stick to my pencil. <laughs> oh, okay. It's easier. I'd rather spend the ten minutes in the morning to do that rather than, I don't know. Now, I, I don't know. I mean. I know you said you don't do the special effects, but what about the fantasy themes like the mermaid? I did look. a mermaid look look too for Halloween. If you go on my Instagram, I yeah, well, mermaid, since look to my daughter, she loves mermaids, and I'm finding out there's like a whole mermaid culture. Yeah, it's out very there. popular. It's a whole mermaid culture, and it's so easy to do though. All you have to do is put like a fi like a fishnet stocking on your face. And just like blot the eyeshadow that you want, and then you put it off, and it looks like scales on your face. Oh man, yes, me's so watching easy. this right now. It's a wrap at the house. <laughs> <laughs> Wifey's like, "What is she doing? What is she?" Do? My daughter's <laughs> sitting next to Wifey watching right now. We're gonna come. What? Take get that off your head. She thinks she remember. <laughs> so now, along with that, you know, give us some of the tips. What what tip would you have? For, like, so, a questions you obviously answering the questions, but what is what was the most helpful tip that you feel that like you gave on your blog? Uh, I would say just keep it natural. You know, a lot of girls kind of cake on the foundation and the powder. You don't have to do all that. No, you don't. I would go for a medium coverage look because it's more like for every day. It's more natural. kind of looks like you did something, but not that you went overboard and you're trying to do something too extra. Blend that jawline. Blend it, yes, please. Oh my blend God. that jawline. Just blend it in down here and you'll be all right. And learn how to tone it down, man. <laughs> we, we, we greet you and next thing you know, it's on our shirt and stuff. Tone it down like, with the blush. Just tone it down. I like to do a nice bronzer. Just, you know, nice sun glow. 
Nice little highlight on the cheekbone, and that's it. Well, what seems to be trending now? The summer's here. Oh, what highlighters. seems to be trending now? Highlighters. Highlighters, yeah. You just put it right on the cheekbone, the inner corner of your eye, the bridge of your nose, and it looks like you're just glowing. And now, you, d what is your opinion on if you go with dark makeup for the eyes? Do you go with a lighter tone for the lipstick? Yeah, I do. I just feel like it's more balanced. If I, you go for like a dark eye and a dark lip, it's just like a lot in your So you face. go light eyes, dark lips, yeah. when that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You and can do what light about eyes, the, dark lips. the swish, the cat thing, what's that? The cat, the, yeah, the cat eye, yeah. The cat eye. I'd Big fan of I that or no? I personally don't do it on myself too much. I just, I don't know. I'm not into the top Well, you liner. did the gypsy. You said you did a gypsy. That thing. I had to so do it for that. The cat eye, yeah, no? for special occasions. But for an every day, I don't walk around with a cat eye every day. I know people <laughs> who know? do. The lady who delivers our food at the barbershop works at Man 6 Sports Deli. She does the cat's eye. Yeah. Like she's in sweatpants and she has cat's eye. <laughs> she put the cat's eye. <laughs> I swear, she's like sweatpants. That's the one thing No she makeup. Has she to... has the cat's eye. And yeah. she does two of them. Oh my God. She no. double catted. If I were to wear sweatpants, I need to just have my eyebrows on and I'm good. Eyebrows. That's I, it. Yeah, eyebrows is very important. It's very, it, it frames your face. Well, that's what you're going to be looking at when you're conversating with it. Even like you got the, you know, like us as barbers, we got the people who want them, to be, you know, the reggaeton, reggaeton eyebrows. Mm -hmm. but, like I get the <laughs> eyebrows, and you want the reggaeton, you want the regular, <laughs> you know. So we know if I'm going to come with that crazy arc and thin it. Okay, there we go. That's the mermaid. That's the mermaid. mermaid. Yeah. There, we, there it goes. <laughs> Ready to go out. That's like uh the commercial right there. It's an ad. Thank you. That was a gypsy look I did for Halloween a couple years ago, too. That was fun. That I went all out with, with the eyes and the lips, too. Okay, very natural right there. And yeah. the hair, too. Gotta, yeah. gotta love the hair. I was I, I was transitioning from relaxed hair to natural hair. So this is, like, my, right now my full-blown natural hair. Frizz and all, but... And what do you suggest when it comes to straightening your hair? Because you have your hair straightened. Yeah, but those are, those are... But well, what do you do? Because I'm going through the struggle with my daughter. She'll, sometimes, you know... And, you know, is it a blowout? Or what are you doing? You're taking a hot iron to give, some, give me a tip I on would that. Have, I, if, if you're going to straighten your hair at all, I would do the roller set. And then I will blow dry it lightly after that. But I would avoid the flat iron. That, that's so much heat to your hair. Like, direct heat. You're pressing on there. And I know the, the stylists at the salons are putting it at, like, 450 degrees, probably. And you're seeing the heat come out from the flat iron. That's just so much damage. We had a curl. Sephro. Who's the curl specialist that was on the show two, three weeks ago? She was a straight curl specialist. She came out from New Jersey. She came out with just a hair. Well, we'll get her name. Yeah. Now, do you agree when it comes to cutting curly hair? Well, pretty sure anybody that they're specialized, people who specialize in this. Yeah. Are you cutting one curl at a time? Are you, when it comes to, you know, maybe emphasizing the curls on your blog, mm. do you pay attention to each curl? At a time? Yeah, I mean, it depends. I do get my hair cut um, at the Diva Sean Salon. They do specialize in cr cutting curly hair dry. It's so artful because people yeah. run away, Al. You know how that one blonde hair dude walks in the shop? Or, or if it's a white shop, a black person walking, everybody can go to the bathroom? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah. the salons, they do it too with like curly hair. Like she walk into a salon be like, oh, I'm going on lunch break. <laughs> oh, I got to use the bathroom, that coffee. got to me. I got to leave early today. <laughs> yep. No, but... um. Yeah, they'll, they'll cut curl by curl by curl. Curl by yeah. curl, right? I yeah. know uh, Vincenzo. He's mm -hmm. from La Moda Salon. He's uh, uh, Italian. His father's in the hair Olympian. Mm. He is the curl king or curl prince from out, out here <laughs> in these parts. <laughs> and uh, he's, he's nice with it. And I just know that it's an art form. It's I know, art form. again, I've, I've got hitting up like, hey, do you, can you recommend a hairstylist? And it's it's just hard to find someone that well, I'm gonna put my name on. Like, oh, go to this person. It's like, hard they, to trust somebody too. And then, and you know how it is too, because if they mess it up, already you got this thing. Like, people with curly hair, they go from hating, loving it, hating, loving it, until they find themselves. Like, okay, you know what? I love my hair and embrace it. So yeah. now, yeah. So you now you gotta find that one person that you're gonna click with that right. you can sit in a chair and trust them. Do you give any tips on how someone with your hair can find someone in their area to get it done? I feel like it's all about recommendations, you know, because I can recommend a couple people that I know who did my hair, and then you just pass the word that on. That should be part of your blog. Yeah. Finding out people who are dope at cur curly hair. Yeah. And then you just have that information you know. there. Yeah. Let the go, go to you for the advice <laughs> for the curly hair. You can come to me, right? <laughs> now, when it comes down, now, when it comes down to lipstick, mm-hmm. Are you a fan of 
laying down the foundation and going with the outline as well. A lip, the lip liner? Yeah. Yeah. The lip liner. Yeah, it helps to draw it in easier. Well, yeah, um, that's when the people right. got no lips. Got <laughs> yeah, it just, it just also helps it not to bleed out, like the, the lipstick. So if you have a lip liner, it kind of like keeps it in and it helps it to stay longer. Now, you recommend to make them shiny the lip gloss on top of the lipstick or no? I'm not a lip gloss person. Not no. a lip gloss. I'm more like a matte person okay. or a satin finish. Okay, matte. Matte being as more natural. Like, you said that. Uh, matte is just like dry, okay. like not shiny. Not so shiny. I don't like lip gloss. <laughs> no lip gloss. No, not for me, but you anybody like else. The, you don't even like the song. No, and then <laughs> the lip gloss is <laughs> like, I don't like this. I don't even like the song. <laughs> No, it's just, you know what, for me it was like when it's like windy outside and your hair is blowing your, in your face and then it'll stick onto your mouth because it's like lip gloss. That would, that's my biggest turn off. LA, can we go picture, picture? Is he still showcasing, right? Oh, he's done? Oh, man, look at that. He came in, he came in here ready to go, landed, yeah, landed, yeah. wasn't playing. Yeah. Since I, I, I feel well. Am I supposed to go over there and give you a chest bump? He looked like he want a chest bump. <laughs> <laughs> he want to jump over there and chest bump me or something. <laughs> All right, Landon. All right, Landon. All right, I see that. And he's very coordinated. Wait till he comes over. He's very coordinated. He got the phone, uh, the phones on. Got the shirt going. Very co coordinated. Oh, yeah, he got the champ. I see that. I see that. Champion's making that move right there. I like yeah, the cone man. head hoodies. That's why I mess with them cone head hoodies. Classic. Yep, very classic. So now, Danielle, where do you see the block going? Do you are you gonna try to? Uh, because it's a beauty blogger and there's a lot to do with beauty. Mm -hmm. I know you have the makeup and you say you get the vice with hair. Yeah. Are you plan do you plan on taking it to different places with like nails and fashion as well? Probably more with fashion, yeah. Just this, just that how to put a whole look together with the makeup, the hair and the clothes and then you're out the door and that's and it. And the nails too. Yeah, the nails too. Well, now I'm trying to take a break from nail polish. <laughs> it's damaging my nails right now, but um yeah, the gel nail polish, you know about that? I know about the gel because yeah. you have to be a certain age to have the gel. Oh, yeah? yeah? I didn't know that. My uh, my daughter would like the gel, gel, but she's she's young. Yeah, no. She's eight. If you're going to do the gel, I would take it easy on that because for me, I've been constantly doing it every two weeks, you know, the scratching off and the UV light. and the, It's making my nails so weak and soft. It's not even funny. You know how you said uh, simple, natural? I will say this. Every guy likes the French manicure on females. <laughs> So whether you're going with the V or the straight across, every guy likes to see a female with the French manicures. That's the white tips if you don't know what I'm talking about. Mm. That's what we like. That's classy. That's what we like. And then you're going to run into the lip gloss guys like guy, guy, who like girls with lip gloss. And now the matted finish. See, we're learning here, people. <laughs> you're watching the Citizen Salute show. Uh, the show was designed to bring barbers, hairstylists, and makeup artists together worldwide. And we use the Scissor Salute show as an outlet to actually make that happen. Every Monday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time, we give a choice, a uh, chance for the visual artists to come down here and showcase their skills live on the Scissor Salute show stage. So you can download the Scissor Salute show app, fill out the showcase information, or email us, scissorsalute at yahoo.com. And we'll get back to you in the order that the emails receive. Right now, I'm going to ask you to press the share button, which is underneath my finger. And we're going to say thank you to for Danielle for coming down here. Thank and you. thank you, Barbershop Gods, for allowing them to make it here because it was torrential downpours was on their way. So before we let you go, please let everybody know how they could get in contact with you, how they could find that beauty blog, mm -hmm. and all your social media information that you'd like to share with us. Please do so now. The stage is yours. Yes. Hi. So, again, my name is Danielle Cologne. You can follow me on Instagram at Danielle Cologne X3, also on Twitter. And you can go on YouTube and just search my name, Danielle Cologne, you'll find me, or Danielle Cologne Makeup. And, uh, yeah, just give a lot. You can DM me if you want. I have any questions. I'll definitely ask them as soon as I can. Well, thank you so much, Danielle Cologne. Thank We're going to go through the video <laughs> real quick. You got to say Danielle Cologne. Thank okay. <laughs> you. I have four main objectives for White's Barber Co. The first is to provide quality customer service in a family-friendly environment. The second is to provide training and career opportunities for professionals and aspiring professionals. The third is to restore our beloved profession to its former glory. And lastly, for White's Barber Co. to be a beacon to the local and global community. This is what White's Barber Co. is all about. We create a family-friendly environment. We make people feel like not just a client, but like you're a part of our family. I want people to feel welcome when they come in. I want people to be greeted and feel like 
this is somewhere where everybody knows their name, somewhere they can let their hair down, literally and figuratively. Um, no, no worries of, of profanity or inappropriate material on the radio, on the television. It's somewhere where you could come in and, and go and tell someone and say, hey, I had a really good experience at this place. You should probably go check it out. Okay, well, well we're over here talking about fitted hats. We just got done interviewing uh, Danielle Colon, and now she's about to showcase. She's about to, uh, it's, it threw me off. First ever blogger to come here on the show, and that's what she does, beauty blog. And we're going to have uh, some more of her handle coming up. Make sure you follow her on Instagram, Danielle Colon X3. Okay. In the studio, we have Dante Stevenson and the bow tie bandit with his signature bow tie. <laughs> I see that. Says a salute. How you doing? Says a salute to that. Salute and to you, you, I see you rocking uh, um, the uh, Barber Brothers hat right here. Oh, it is? Oh, yeah. Washington Cutters. Yes. Out in Carteret, New Jersey. Okay. And I can see the beard coming in. You see that? Beer's yeah. coming in great right there. Got a nice T-shirt on. Yeah, courtesy of you know Maestro. Yes, yes, yes. It's yeah. so okay for the people that are for the people that are viewing the show right now. Uh, these are financial advisors here to help the whole industry grow. And what is happening is a lot of us we cut hair and we live for today, not thinking about tomorrow. And when tomorrow does come. Is this, you know, we hope it don't come like, you know, something bad happens, but what happens if it does? Dante, let them know exactly what you guys represent, what is available out there, and how they could get in contact with you. All right. Um, well, we're going we're gonna to do something a little different here tonight. Pretty much we're going to do just an a intro on exactly how valuable we are to the industry. Um, both time being in myself, and there's a team of us. Um, let's get straight right to it. Uh, we're gonna talk about love, love and money today. Let me ask you something, Eli. When you first started off as a barber or cutting hair, was it about the love for you or was it about the money? When I first, it was about money. When you um, first pick up a pair of clippers, money. All right. <laughs> My my situation was a little different. Uh, you know, was getting older, and I did like every stereotypical Latino job there was. Worked in the on the fields, landscaping, dishwashing. I did it all. I did a lot of them. And the last one, I was uh, doing sanding floors. Yeah. And you know, anybody who has mom, that's I was first generation out of here. And they're not Americanized, they already know, like, that's it. You got to get that money. So first time I picked up the Clippers was for money. I was already in love with the barbershop for four years. I was in the shop four years before I started cutting hair. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've always had a love for the industry, but the reason why I picked up them Clippers was the one day when someone asked me to cut their hair, and I didn't know what I was doing, sweeping hair. Mm -hmm. Say, yo, cut my hair. You ain't here more than barbers. It's like, man, I just sweep hair. He's like, I'll give you $30. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> so please continue. All right. But for the most part, it started off with the love for it, right? Yes. Now, um, excuse me. Now, for the most part, most of us, whatever you do is for the love. Um, excuse me. It's for the love. So, so once you develop in, in that skill of, I guess, being a barber or doing hair or makeup, it's, n it's no longer more about the love anymore. The love is still there, but it's become more about the money. It's more become, it becomes about being successful. It becomes about, um, excuse me, um, successful. Um, it, it just takes everything to a, a different level. I want to tell you to elaborate real quick. Excuse me, I got to get my thoughts. Um, well, you know, when it does start off with the love, Pretty much, you start gaining money afterwards. <laughs> well, it's because it's more it's more of a genuine thing. I know that when when you're doing something that you love and you're having fun doing it, yeah. it becomes more of a genuine thing. 
it, it increases the value when you're doing it with love. When it's something that you love, it, it turns from being a career or a job into just something that you love. So you wake up in the morning, you're proud to go into that shop. Yeah, so basically you're saying it's not even a thing where it's it just becomes the norm because that's what you love to do. Mm -hmm. Just like if, something simple as, you know, you love food. Yep. You love to go to your establishment, your place of business, and work. Yes, and, and with that being said, now you're motivated. It's not the love no more. You're motivated by something. What is that? The money. Money, you know, motivates you to, to do two things, good things or, or bad things. So as, uh, as I guess, for I'm um, someone that's do hair or makeup that's in the industry, you start like the love. Of, um, f the love is not about the you doing hair anymore. It's about the money. So now, now that you find that you can make X no amount of dollars, you sacrificing what, what you love also, which is your family, because your main thing is just I got to get this money to provide for my family. So now, yeah, you love your family, but you sacrificing your family for the money. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you know, you're losing focus. By you so on the grind, thinking about I got to get this money, you're missing out on family moments. Right. That's, that seems to be, it definitely is a theme for what we do in the industry because instead of going to events, we're so busy, caught up, getting people ready to go to the events. Yeah. So we do miss out on a lot of family time. You just heard Al say he put his work in. You know, put them hours in, and he worked to get where he's he is right now, and that happens a lot with us. You know, we we we're basically really caught up on the weekends because that's the biggest, most busiest time for us. So that's when you know events happen. You know, I know some people they invite me to a wedding. I'm like, you can't invite me to go on a wedding on Saturday if you really love me. Yeah. <laughs> if you really love me. Don't ask me to go to a wedding on Saturday. Or get married Because I ain't going. <laughs> Sorry. Please uh, continue. So we just left off on, we established the love. We established the value of the love. And now we're also establishing the time that there's never enough time. Yes. Um, by you sacrificing the time and you getting all this money, you're getting it. What are you doing with it now? You sacri you don't sacrifice the time. You done you done broke your back and your fingers doing doing what you love or once love. You know you have all this money, so the faster you get it, what's what you gonna do? Spin it. There's not there's nobody telling you what to do with this money. Like like I need you. Or people like myself need you more than you need us. Because you might not look at it, but you do. Because we're walking billboards. We need to look good for the public. We need to look good to go into the office. You know how many jobs have rules you can't have your hair a certain way? So what do you do? It's very true. You got you to gotta go, go chop it. Got to get it shaped up. So who's going to do it? I'm not going to do it because I'm not that good. <laughs> I, I, give, I do my own own haircut or own shape up or whatever. I'm gonna go to y'all. I'm I'm not paying for, um, I'm not paying just to get it shaped. I'm I'm paying for the service, because a lot of great barbers give you great service. Definitely, that seems to be seems to be really big right now in the industry where barbers are no longer focused. Well, you know, the haircut is just a part of it. If you focus now on the service. You can increase your income. You know, I like uh, Morano. Morano, I love his theme. His theme is his theme is to go beyond the twenty five dollar thirty five dollar trap. I'm like, what? Did you see his video? And some people still less than that. He did two yeah. haircuts at the same time. Two hundred and seventy five dollars. Mm. Please continue, Dante. Please. It's a lot of money right there. Yes, it is. <laughs> now, now, now that you have this money and, and you're blowing it fast, you forgot. Um, you're forgetting now. You're forgetting that you grind so hard 
for um, for your family, are you taking care of your family? Yes, they look good with the latest trends and the latest clothes, but are you um are you putting away for their future? You know, college saving. You have kids, you got to put away for co- your kids' um, college. Do you have um, income protection? Do you have disability? Like, like being that you're doing what you love. Do you um do you have that um do you have that um the right insurance to make sure just in case you can't do what you love anymore to still pay the bills? Because the bill is never going to go away. So, so you might have protection on everything, but the stuff that really counts. You might have protection on your car, protection on your cell phone. You might even have sneaker cleaning because a lot of um people in the hair, hair industry is big on sneakers. There's a lot of yeah, sneaker heads. And I'm pretty sure you you don't have every sneaker cleaner there right is. there. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make sure, um, you see, um, being that you're a sneaker head, you probably have, like I said, every type of cleaner that you, um, that there's possible. But do you have protection on your life, like I said? Protection on your body, just in case you're unable to work. Protection on your income, protection for your family. If you don't have that, or health insurance, or even protection for your future as a barber do you, or a hairstylist, do you have that mo- do, the money that you're getting so fast? Or are you putting it away? Are you putting it in the right place? I mean, the mattress is, is not a good, it's a good place, but it's not the best place. You're not making no money under the mattress. You're not grow- your money not growing. It's just staying right under the mattress. Do you and now? Um, now this is the difference between a barber and a dude that cuts hair. A barber handle his business. A dude that cut hair, he just out here for the moment. Now, if you have everything in place for this, yes, you would call yourself a barber. But if you don't, you got to work on some things. That's why Brent and myself and, and we have a team that's here to help you. This um trying to get money. And put it into this account or that account, like it's cool, but it's not what you really want to do. You want to, you want to, you want something to build for a long period of time, give you residual income, because eventually you might get arthritis in your hand. How you gonna cut? How you gonna do somebody um um line up? What well, what the clippers on your teeth? Nah, gotta make sure you got the right coverage, because when you are unable to do hair, excuse me, or makeup or whatever you do. Do you have that security? Do you have that insurance for your uh, um to 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 um continue your daily your daily day living? Daily days living. Excuse me. No. So <clears throat> so basically, just wanted to say this real quick. Quick. You're watching the Sis Salute Show, program designed for barbers, hairstylists, and makeup artists to come down here and unify, able to network with each other, and we get the opportunity. Every Monday night, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time for the visual artists to come down here and showcase. So right now on the main screen, you're watching the showcase. We also conduct interviews with barbers, hairstylists, makeup artists, and people that are in the industry making movements. These two gentlemen here, what they're here discussing is insurance for barbers. Um, Whether it's health insurance or physical insurance, Basically, a crutch. <laughs> like, if a barber breaks his hand, you're not making any type of income. These gentlemen will try to do, try to lead you in the right way as far as that. And at the same time, also some money management advice. So, his name might be Dante Financial, but at the same time, it's almost like a coaching. So, it's almost like a money coach. And he, right now he's discussing the importance of when you first got in the industry, it was about love. And if you do something with love, it's, gonna be, it's not going to be work. It's going to be something that you love. But at the same time, if you're not able to do what you love, you're not going to be able to pay the bills. Because when it comes down to it, the bills are always going to come. So you got to have some sort of security there. So if you have car insurance, cell phone insurance, or you got, you know, he's talking about the sneaker cleaner, that's stuff that's maintenance and trying to keep you secure. But do you have actual insurance for yourself? So you deserve it. You should be able to treat yourself and be prepared for the unexpected. 
And also, don't cheat your family by not having it. You could give them a great lifestyle of being fly from head to toe, but God forbid something happened to you, what's going to happen? Now that lifestyle that they was living, it's no longer, you know, you can't provide for that. Either you're not here in a physical sense or, you're, or you can't do it because you're unable to. Now they're going from Jordans and stuff to, no, no disrespect, though, but they're going to the hand-me-downs. They're going to the cousins. Like, you know, the kids are growing. So you don't want to be that selfish en uh, enough not to make sure that their future is not, it's not covered. When people say, yeah, I have life insurance, life insurance, because you got a $50,000 policy, that can't stretch for 20 years. You need to make sure you have enough coverage for the next 15, 20 years, especially if you have young kids. Now, if your kids are older, it's a different story. But at the same time, you still want to have, you still want to have enough coverage for your family for the next 20 years. Definitely. And uh, we'd like to thank you two gentlemen for coming down. Are you guys going to uh, this Sunday? Yes, oh, yeah. Philly, yeah. Okay, so while we're at it right here with these two gentlemen sitting up here, this Sunday, June 25th, at the Fillmore in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Barberinger's Life Expo. You can follow him on Instagram, Barberinger's Life. For more information, if you plan on attending, <coughs> vending, or competing, make sure you come down to booth 160, where the Barber Maestro program and Respect My Craft present the Awakening Maestro Showcase Part 2 at booth 160. Um, you can go to Instagram, Respect My Craft, or Barber Maestro, and you can hashtag Barber Maestro if you would like your best work, beard work, uh, reposted. And we also have our uppercut up in here, which is the Beard Authority representative, so make sure you follow them on Instagram. So are you guys going to be there? Yes, be at Booth 160. you be at Booth <laughs> 160. There we go. Uh, Booth 160 with the uh, Maestro's Classic. So, gentlemen, please sound off on um, how people can get in contact with you. All your social media information that you'd like to share with them, please do so now. The stage is yours. So, salute to that. Um, Dante, D-O-N-T-A-Y underscore financial. Okay, that's my IG. Um, no Twitter, Snapchat, none of that. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Brent underscore yeah underscore financial guy it's my bow tie eye. bandit <laughs> let's get back to the cut cam what hold, thing on, hold on hold on oh, can okay. i say one more thing can i say one more thing Go ahead. all right just to make this real clear out there the industry is moving in a different way y'all might not see it you might not hear about it right now but pay attention in the next year there's a lot of movement that's going to be happening including on um, with the bow tie bandit and myself um, we're out here making moves and making sacrifices to take this industry to a whole nother level. Now, you might, like, right now, you might not understand, but in due time, you will see what's going to happen. Now, either you're going to be part of it or you're going to get left. If you get left, I feel sorry for you because don't say we never told you. Don't never say that our uppercuts or Eli, or anybody haven't warned you. This is the warning. So when that ship take off, you don't want to be left behind. All right there, Dante. So let's get back, back to back. Danielle Cologne. 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 She is showcasing right now. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna stop with the Pacinos thing because she might. <laughs> I don't know. She might be like, let me, let, me, let me show you why I got this last name. Mira, yo tengo la correa también. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> don't even know that right now she's showcasing right now. If we could just go to the cut cam. You're watching the Scissor Salute Show. You can download the Scissor Salute Show app if you want to see the rest of the shows. Or if you're just tuning in now and want to see the beginning where we interviewed my show's classics and babbleless educator, Al Uppercut, who is still, still in the studio. Real quick, uh, this Sunday, the 25th. Make sure you come to the educational portion of the show starting at 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, me, myself, I'll be sharing my beard sculpting techniques Ooh. along with some other educators. Oh, so you're <laughs> ed you're the one. Yes. Okay. And we will also have a Babylon's booth. I'll be there with Van de Goat. Van de Goat. Going to be at the Fabulous Babylon's. 
booth. It's going to be a great time. Uh, follow at Tone Cuts, at Barbering is Life, at Beer Authority, at Al Uppercut. Barbara Maestros. At Barbara Maestros. And Scissor Salute Show. Scissor Salute Show. And um, this, uh, listen, okay, so we've been having, I've been having fun saying Danielle Cologne today. I've been, Cologne. I've been having a lot of fun. I'm sorry, Danielle, I've been, I've been having fun saying Danielle Cologne. But how much fun are we going to have with this guy who could have been the, the uh, Wu-Tang member with his name? Ray Lansky. Oh, Ray Lansky. <laughs> that, I'm like, what? That Yo, Ray that's Lansky, like best, that's where that's my man's beat. That's the best name ever right there. <laughs> that's You're like, the best oh, name ever. Yes. Man, change the plans, people. Lansky. Ray Lansky. Like, wow. Like, damn, <laughs> yo. Like, Ray Kwan would have fun seeing that. I love that, man. And yo, Sean. And yo, Sean. Sean, Sean, My man, Ray Lansky. Yo, he be hitting the situation. Yo, he sharp with the bigs. So, Ray Lansky, it's always an honor to have you here in the studio. Always um, on the beer. It's um, listen, man. We love you. You came here on the show the first time. You said I'm gonna be back. It seems like you're coming here at least once a year. Once every two seasons, you're coming through. Exactly. We love to have you here in the studio. You're bringing us a, a new member of your team, uh, Landon Crawford, uh, Razor yes, underscore Razor. L underscore D one. Yes, sir. And uh, he just laid down a nice. Uh, th is this the is this the first barber makeup combo? No, we had a barber makeup combo before, but we laid down a nice natural haircut, and now we have Danielle doing the nice natural makeup. So right. you know, let's get into it, Landon. How long you been doing uh, doing what you're doing? Well, I can say I've been cutting since I was 12 years old. 12. 12 years old. How did that come about? You got brothers. I have three brothers. Okay. Yes. So, you know, basically, um, well, I learned from my uncle. Okay, as a kid, I used to watch my uncle cut his whole head, you know, on, on, on a daily, I mean, on a weekly basis, he'll cut his own head, and I would sit there and watch him cut his hair. And after a while, I wanted to, like, try it out on my brothers and stuff like that. So I started cutting their hair at the age of 12, and ever since then, I just had a passion for it. And and what, is Unc say, what does Unc say now? Wow, you you took it to another he level. He said, Land, "Landon, Landon, never did that boy. You laid down them fade there, yeah. there, boy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Took it to another level. You know, I'm just real dedicated to it, and I'm just trying to get better. Okay, so you've been doing this since you were 12, right? Obviously, you've had them cords in your hand. Do you like? Are you using the cordless now? Do you like? Are you feeling them cordless? I have a few cordless clippers. Do you have the Babyliss 673s? No, I don't. Well, oh, we'll let man. you know right now after the show. I'm pretty oh, sure <laughs> this gentleman right here is going to be talking to you about that. And okay. again, we have Ray here. Um, you guys uh, don't know. It's just crazy because we were just talking about the No Sleep to Brooklyn bringing, uh, bringing the hip-hop. This should be the hip-hop hip edition today. The hip-hop right. edition. And this edition. gentleman right hip -hop here would do edition. full videos. In, so he did ODB in a hand. Wu-Tang. Okay. Did Wu Tang Ill and behind it, it was like a whole story. He did like a whole like YouTube footage no, that's dope. for what was going on there. And he also had an event named after it. Was uh, it Re cut, cut Religion? Cut Religion. It's on the hiatus now. We're trying to uh, recoup, but uh, that's on the hiatus. But everything else is on the uh, is uh, it's a go. It's a growing situation right now. It's a blessing right now. Um, right now, actually, I'm going. I'm currently going through a transition right now. And for some reason, this show was meant to be because I'm a hip-hop barber, and I'm actually going through a transition in my career that involves business and investments. You know, um, since my last visit, you know, um, I, went to, uh, I went through a, um, an educational transition. Even though my style is uh, professional, I'm hip-hop, I'm edgy as, you know, edgy as hell, you know. Um, I'm very educational. You know, a lot of people don't know, you know. Um, Actually, I was offered the opportunity to become a licensed educator for a school sponsored by Redkin. If anybody's familiar with Redkin, wow, that's yeah, that's dope. Yeah. It's Redkin, um, and uh, the opportunity came very spontaneous to the point where, as though I was supposed to start in February, right? And they said, "No, no, no, no. We need you to start in October." I said, "Well, listen, I have a lot of things on my plate right now, you know, and." You know they say money talks, so I was fortunate to get a um, full scholarship for the situation. You know, so while I was in training, you know, it actually enhanced my level of professionalism working at 
T-Spa, which is the Salon Professional Academy, now called the Innovate Academy because they just changed their name maybe a month ago. And you still have your establishment. I still have my establishment. Mm -hmm. And as far as my establish establishment goes, uh, and, you know, a lot of people seen it, and this is one of the first time I've ever talked about it in public. I'm currently going through a transition right now where as though my energy pu is uh, pulling towards more of the business side. So I'm focused on bringing more barbers up, such as Landon and other barbers who want to take their situation to another level. As uh, uh, far as like the professionalism, where we come from, many barbers are not licensed. You know, so that's why when True. state... Right, so you know, so a state board official, I have a stereotype and look at a guy with my description and assume I'm not licensed, not realizing I'm, you know, I'm fully legit, and I influence other brothers as well because, like we said before, this is not a hustle; it's a career. You don't want to be feeling like we're on a block doing some legal. Oh, it's five zero. Oh, it's state board. The hell with that. Pardon my language, but when state board comes in, the last state board visit, I felt good that I could check them. <laughs> Honestly, I felt good that I could check them. You know? I'm, I'm straight. You get <laughs> what I'm saying? And it's, I'm and, good. And, and, and it's not it, it, it's not easy because for years, you know, Jersey uh, wasn't fortunate to actually have a barbering program. So for years, yeah, yeah, we just we had know. a cosmetology. So it was a struggle, you know. And right, right. fortunately, the game has changed. And right now, you know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm honored, you know, that I'm, I'm I'm blessed with a situation where as though I can make a contribution to the the next level of future barbers. And that's a special thanks to Susan Guido, uh, someone who's known me since I first enrolled in hair school when I was a youngin. When I wasn't as focused, I wasn't Ray Lansky. I wasn't working at my first barber shop yet, you know. And uh, she she watched my whole situation grow from then until now. And I'm fortunate to get the opportunity. And I have some good news. I just passed my uh, written state board exam for my educator's license Tuesday. So, salute to that. Salute to that. Salute to that. Salute. So, you're going to be going to the uh, Barbering and Slave Expo? It's this Sunday. It's this Sunday. Oh, Sunday. We got to make it out there. If you make it out there, I'm going to introduce you to someone that can embrace your professionalism mm -hmm. and they are looking for people just like you. We're talking about Paul White from the International Barbers Association. Mm. Wow. wow. From Paul White from the... They, listen... They have like a criteria for you to join. Join. In right. other words, you know how the gentleman we're just here talking about they're not taking any, uh, not all vendors? Right. Right. They, they do it the same. They will actually go to your establishment and they do like a quality control test. Okay, okay, I'm not okay. I mean, I'm, I'm listening to them talk. I was like. It's like a Bethany, <laughs> like a, like a uh, what's, what's, the, what's the lady? Well, listen, you know, uh, they're from the DMV area, the base out of the DMV area, but okay. they're, they're, they're really making some moves. Is it like this a Tabitha happened. type situation? Huh? Is it like a, a barber version of Tabitha or something? No, it is. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's just something that embraces the their. Ah oh, man, I wish I would have wrote down the word. I have it written down in my book. I've been bringing my book here. I've just been going off the top of the head like Jay Z in the booth. <laughs> <laughs> so so oh, basically, the, one of the stories, real quick, I gotta say real quick, because it's just. And the, the, uh, the DMV area, they were trying to arrest unlicensed barbers. This gentleman, the International Barbers Association, said, no, you're not going to arrest these unlicensed barbers. Arrest? You're going to wow. give you... Wait, like, like getting the law like involved? Like, find them. Yeah, getting the law involved. Wow. Delaware wanted to get the like law involved. Wow. That, that area. Wow. They said, no, you're not going to do that. You're going to give us a list of these barbers, and we're going to go out and make sure they get licenses. I was like, what the? Who is this? That's, that's, that's what we're going to bring that. So basically, he talks about professionalism. So you're saying right now, I see, Ray, I, I feel like, you know, we've known each other for a bit. You coming into the show, I feel like you have a different awakening now. The, right. you're, you're talking about your professionalism is at a different level. you having an awakening. It's a, definitely, yeah, yeah definitely. It's, you're having another, another breath. Right, it definitely is it's definitely another breath. It's another chapter. Um, also, as far as you know, second uh, win. That's what I was looking for. Second win, second exactly. Win. Um, <laughs> my bad. The, the the brothers mentioned, you know, far as you know, securing your future. Um, you know, I'm also I'm fortunate. I'm part of a, a partnership group right now. Uh, we deal with investments. Uh, the last situation was a little rocky, but uh, you know, we're blessed that it's still a growing situation. Amongst other things that you know, I won't discuss right now, but. Uh, like I said, I'm looking more towards 
the, I'm, I'm I'm at a chapter where I'm I'm really you know building f more towards the future. You know, uh, more towards exclusive uh, as a brand, whereas though everyone's is leveling up literally. Like you know, like I pray one day that hey, listen, you know, um, this exclusive barbershop uh, it, it's not it's not owned by me. Hey, that's just, this is landing. You get what I'm saying and. Franchise. He, he, he's on this level because because <laughs> at the end of the day I tell everybody like I always say titles are musical chairs. You born someone's parent, no, you no, you born someone's child. You become a parent. You rent before you own. You 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 the underdog before you're top dog. You sacrifice struggle before being rewarded. Titles just right, musical right. chairs, so you never take your title for granted. I never throw boss or none of that around on, on IG. None of that. I just handle my business. I just like to put in work. You know, because I know one day I'm not going to be the boss. One day I'm going to have to step down and go into that stage where as though I'll just be considered the founder. You understand what I'm saying? Definitely. So for all right. those out there, these IG bosses, reality check yourself. The titles are musical chairs. Remember that. Remember that. That's titles are musical they chairs. In people. other words, if you keep on dropping them titles, someone's going to pull that chair out from underneath you. Exactly. <laughs> How you like that? Ah. I was at the top of the head with that. Like that. I just rolled with that. Wow. Right, right, right. I just rolled right. with that. Right. So, Landon, let me ask you something. How do you feel about being someone that, you know, he's caught a second win. He's already pretty much established himself in the position, uh, owner, right. and influencer. But now he's he has his second win. How does it feel to be part of that now? It feels great, man. It's real positive. You know, we're moving forward, you know. I can actually learn from him and actually be in his spot one day. And, and actually now, teach somebody under me, you know. So you guys are big on upsells now. Now that you're an owner, what is the what, give us for the viewers I'm that are watching it. right now? Well, give it for the viewers that are watching right now. How is it? How important is it for barbers to learn about the upsells just as much as hairstylists? Hairstylists are like they download data and they're bred to have that upsell mentality. In other words, they will remind them that, hey, you know, you got that shampoo two months ago. Do you need more? Right. You know, da, da, da. how important is it for barbers to know about these upsells? You as an owner. Yo, you know what? Yeah. It's very important. Let me tell you how important it is. It's a segment that they have in the class, right, when I was being trained at the uh, uh, at Innovate Academy. And it's a, it's a segment they have for the students called product knowledge. And some students is like, you had a, a, a student, a barbering student that – you had a barber student that I had to, you know, uh, you know, slow down. He said, hey, he interrupts the teacher. He said, hey, how am I going to be the illest barber? And we have to sit here and listen about product knowledge. I said, slow down. This product knowledge is the knowledge that's going to take your career financially further right. than behind the chair. Right, now, right. we start as the core behind the chair. Right. But the core influences that. You get what I'm saying? Yep. But Chino started behind the chair. And he, done, he took over the world. He found another lane. Yeah. He took over the to world. Start, straight you know? up. He took over the world. Since the Pacinos, you know. Definitely since the Pacinos. So, so right. it's 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 very important, time. and and that also influenced the soon to be open this summer on the revamp, the exclusives barbershop beauty supply store in in the shop and online. Okay, That's so up. with That's that up. being said, you guys, the, uh, you know the importance of upsells, right? Exactly. And uh, upsells is basically when you're selling a product and. Trying to manage someone who gets a number three in the top to maybe put some pomade in his hair. Right. But that is focusing on the top part of the canvas. Our uppercut and myself, you right. know, we see that there's, uh, now there's the second part of the canvas, which is the beard. Right, right. So well, are you what? guys currently carrying beard Hey, check it out. Products. I'm going to be honest. I have a beard oil. You? Okay. Oil. Now, listen, you listen, listen, listen. <laughs> we're in the process now of negotiating with a company we can't even name right now for the simple fact we're still testing their samples. Ah. So, you get what I'm saying? That's okay. Cool. But what exclusive, exclusive operation is, it's a, it's a, growing, it's a transition right now. It's, it's not just a regular haircut. We, we, we mainly do appointments. Not saying walkers are not welcome. Walkers are always welcome. But, you know, being that we cater to so many people, you know, we, we're fortunate. We specialize in full service. No service, no haircut is is no 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 one's hair is cut in our shop without a shampoo first. We don't cut hair unless it's shampoo. That's just how we do shampoo and condition. Right. We more we more focused on the service opposed to just giving you the tight cut. I know you might get a little confused when you see, oh, I love his designs. I love his cut. It's sharp. It's clean. What you don't know is the experience in the school's barbershop. I'm not saying it's extremely upscale, but guess what? It's very professional. It's a five-room operation. It used to have a, have a salon. That's going to be the beauty supply, of course. It's a barber room. Now the new addition is the red room. Right. Um, 
you know, we have a waiting area. We have a shampoo area. Uh, we also have a um, a, a pay for no, uh, excuse me, uh, 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 an intern an intern program right now with compensation means an intern will get base pay and they will make money off of tips right now. But we're not going to just hire anybody. You have to be focused. You know, I learned my lesson of just hiring people. You have to qualify. You yeah, have to be we, was, we was talking about that on right. uh, Landon is extremely the owner's focused. edition. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's uh, he's extremely focused. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's a lot of barbers that hit me a lot. You know that unfortunately don't have the professionalism because they don't have their paperwork. I can't afford that anymore. You know, and I want to influence them to have the, to level up. We also consult you. You know, I I can give you a consultation right now. What to do with your beard? What to do with your hair? You know, like I said, my style might appear edgy, but it's professional. But you see that through all our TV. You know, you see a, a professional tattoo artist. He's he's tatted all over to his eyelids, but he's very professional. He probably can tell you what type of ink affects the type of skin. You know, um, that's very important, right it's there. Very important. It's very I feel important. like that's lost. Like that that kind of people kind of forgot about that. The, right. the exactly. consultation. Right, right, exactly. right. Exactly. Exactly. And, and it's very important. You know, um, you have to. You know, barbers have to recognize certain symptoms of the skin, certain diseases, you know. Like, people don't understand how much of a breakdown it is, how much the breakdown of the education it is to cut hair. Some people say, oh, it's just to cut hair. No, 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 no. Yeah, many aspects it's a lot, the game. It's a lot involved. It's yeah. a lot involved. You know, it's, a, it's the temperature of the skin. You right. know, right now, this is a good temperature to cut someone's hair to get a crispy cut. Opposed to, it's 90 degrees in here, bleeding. Don't expect a sharp sweating, hairline. Getting a hair cut. Exactly. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Don't expect a sharp hairline if, if you're sweating bullets, you know, things of that nature. And, you know, I like to keep a, a, a motivated atmosphere, you know, where everyone is motivated. You know, sis salute to Tony. She wasn't even here to, wasn't here to, to make it. Sis salute to Quanice. Uh, and sis salute to all the, all the exclusive barbershop clients. You know, we love y'all, especially... You know, the ones who rock me from day one from Orange, Newark, the whole Essex County. Since Lou to Montclair, you know, it's a lot yes, of sir. new additions from Montclair. Hometown. Especially with Montclair's finest right here. Yes, sir. You know, so um it's been a it's been a it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. The last visit, you know, it's, it's been a bless it's been a it's been a blessing. I'm so excited I can't even talk correct, <laughs> but it's been a blessing, you know. Well, it's it's good to see uh I was just talking to Al the whole day. I'm someone that loves to see Barbers doing good. Right, right. Uh, Hairstylers doing good. Always love to hear when someone ventures out on their own. I know it's hard switching locations, going out of state, um, letting everybody know in a couple weeks, trying to set up that interview, the Skype interview with A Rod. <laughs> I feel like uh, it's it's this is the A ride. <laughs> the, the elegance gang, dude, yo, they got the illest video dude, out right <laughs> now. But listen, El Paso. He was in El Paso. They had El Paso on lock. Him mm. and Marcus Ph. Marcus Ph. Mm. is one of my favorite. And rappers. they was like, let's go to L. A. Wow. Listen, if I had Diddy money, I'd have hired Marcus Ph. Well, he's <laughs> straight up. He's they, now money. they're in L. A. And they they just. Took off. They're at a different place right now because, right. first of all, like basic haircuts, the prices there. Go go on there and check the prices. Sixty dollars. Marcus yeah. is no, no, still no, no, Marcus no, no, no. is still there. <laughs> Mar Marcus. <laughs> I don't know if he's still there. I know he's he pops up in there. Right. But did you see what he posted up on uh on Facebook? No. About like uh, a week and a half, uh, a month and a half ago. No. And I seen it. I should have screenshotted. Twelve hundred dollars <laughs> for a cut. Mm. Yeah, what he's putting out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You know what? I'm not mad at him because people understand this. Look at the time he has to invest. First of all, he's invested time away from his family. Marcus P. Hatch might not see his family for a whole month sometimes. Think about that. Did you yeah. see? I did, did you hear, see I did one, hear that. Did you, you know? see the one? Um, uh, the one post he put up. He wasn't able to get a flight to go cut DJ Mustard's hair, right? Mustard wanted that haircut so much. He flew out to New York because he was out here cutting, uh, a, you know, cut for Puffy. Wow. Did, DJ Mustard flew out here to get the haircut from him and then flew back. Hmm. Wow. Bruh. That's loyalty yeah. at a whole different yeah. thing. Gentlemen, That's we're going to let you sound, sound off, starting off with Landon. Yes, Please let everybody know how they can get in contact with you for them fire haircuts. Oh, yeah. Fire, more yeah. fire, bump, fire, bump, fire. And all your social media information that you'd like to share with us. Please do so now. The stage is yours. All right. Um, I'm Landon Crawford Jr. Uh, you can get in contact with me on Instagram. Uh, my name is Razor L, Razor underscore L underscore D1. And, uh, you know, hit me up anytime. And. 
Ray Lansky. I love saying that. Ray Lansky. Mom. Listen, I just, uh, I don't know if what you're doing, you're, is it exclusives operation? Because you said that during the interview. I like that. It's a, it's a, I like it's that. A, you, a, is that the way it's going to go? Exclusives yeah, 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 operations? And, 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 it's, and it's becoming more into a transition. Operation exclusives. Like, like, like the new transition will be finalized in August. We don't have the actual date until next week, but it's definitely going to be the end of August. Well, that, you know what? Sufro, you heard it right here. When you the guys revamp. get it down, even if you can't make it down, you guys do the video, do a right. little bit of editing. Right. You send right. it, and we'll put the videos on. You guys been here for the right. show. You notice we put the videos for the in-between. Yes. You guys do the in-between. Ray, please let everybody know or mention or scissor salute the people that you want to mention and how you can, they can get in contact with you, your social media information that you like to share with us. Please do so now. The stage is yours. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to scissor salute, like I said, the whole exclusive barbershop clientele. First of all, scissor salute to God for this experience. You know, this journey has been rough, uh, but it's been a blessing through the rough ride. Uh, I want to scissor salute, you know, all the students who, um, all the students who, who motivate me to be, to become a better educator at Innovate Academy. Uh, special salute to uh, Susan Guido, Mrs. Karen, uh, Haley, uh, uh, Julie Longo, and the rest of the barbering class. Also, I want to... Um, new site, exclusivebarbershop.com, officially will be up in August of 2017. Be, be advised. Uh, also, I have a hip-hop documentary trailer dropping next week. So... Stay tuned. Exclusively for you, Seth Row. Exclusively for <laughs> Seth Row, you know. Uh, Operation and, and Exclusives. You can, and you can catch me at IG, Lansky Exclusives. That's L-A-N-D-S-K-I-X-C-L-U-S-I-V-E-S. -S -S -E or Exclusives Barbershop at Instagram. All right? Man, you, you know. sound like you was doing that A. <laughs> like, 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 that's the A E I O U. <laughs> Oh, as a barber so or hairstylist, it is hard trying to cut hair and play secretary at the same time. Especially with all the text messages, emails, phone calls, and comments on social media. So to manage your schedule, you download a bunch of different apps like Schedulista, Style C, and there's tons of others. But with all these different options, which one is best for you? Trying to decide can get overwhelming at times. Why not create your very own app? where you will be able to have customer self-booking, 24-7 receptionist, sell product directly to customer. Other features include loyalty card, coupons, turn-by-turn -turn directions, pay a deposit, watch video, view all your social media including Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, best of all, send push notifications from your phone directly to your app, and so much more. Get an app done today and be future ready. Oh, can we zoom back on that right there? Get a little zoom back. Well, thank you for watching the Scissor Salute Show. We'd like to Scissor Salute AA Straight Razors, Lou the Fade Gishin, uh, DJ the Barber for calling in. Do we have any other calls? No. And the video that you just seen was Effects Apps. That is E F E X X A P P S. Gentlemen and ladies and gentlemen in the industry, why not? Brand yourself. You're telling everybody to do these appointments and brand yourself. Make your own app. And guess what? If you already have an establishment, like say you already have a st established clientele on another appointment app, you could put it right to your own app. So make sure you get in contact with it. Effects app. I like the scissor salute. Al Uppercut, which was, we didn't even plan it. Co host the show. Like the scissor salute, Gary the Barber and Bev's Francis as well. Uh, exclusives. Ray Lansky, where my man's be. We got Landon over here. Got Danielle Cologne. We also have the financial guys. So it's over there, right over here. Amazingly, I'm looking at the screen, pointing to them over there, though. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody who watched the Scissor Salute Show. If you're watching it right now, saying, man, I missed it, don't worry about it. Download the Scissor Salute Show app. And you can watch this episode and all the previous episodes since we've had the app. Uh, we'd like to encourage everybody to still use the hashtag Scissor Salute. It's up to 570,000. And if you're watching this part right now, I'm encouraging everybody to like pictures. Like the pictures. Comment on the pictures. It breathes life into everybody out there that is doing something. So whether you're a makeup artist, barber, or hairstylist, like the picture. 
it, it's totally different. Al likes my pitches. I act differently. When Al uppercut, like, I act differently. So I'm encouraging everybody to like the pitches, man. And it's it's not that much. You're scrolling. Just take the time to like the picture. Leave a comment. Um, please use the hashtag salute show. And if you want to be reposted, the beard, best beard work, make sure you follow Barber Maestro's hashtag Barber Maestro's. We yeah, ask everybody to put their hands in. We're going to do um, Scissor Salute Sound Off, formerly known as a Woe Bundy, but now it's a uh, Scissor Salute Sound Off. So when I say Scissor, you say Salute, but say it as loud as you can. Scissor Salute. Nope, nope, nope. Bring it back. Bring it. I know you guys could go louder than that. What, we had four people last week who was louder than that? Come on. <laughs> Scissor Salute. You see the difference? Do you feel me? Thank you so much. I'm just joking around, man. I'm having fun. That's right. That's what Dante said. You do it. You love it. And if you love what you do, you're not working. You're just loving what you do. Make sure you stay tuned and like Strong Island TV, which is the quickest live stream channel, growing channel on Facebook. No one's messing with us. My house show is coming up next. Stay tuned. Sincerely.